This episode of Chicago's Bravest Story is brought to you by Sports and Ortho Physical Therapy. Corey, you want to add to that? Oh, I could. You can. That's, that's how you start off. You say one <laughs> sentence. That's how you start off. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Keep that. That's that. <laughs> All right. Now I know. All yeah. right. That was. Uh, thanks for uh, tuning in. Uh, that was brought to you by. Yeah, Sports she's great. <laughs> this is the website. Google it. I don't know. <laughs> All right. Take two. This this episode of Chicago's Bravest Stories is brought to you by Sports and Ortho Physical Therapy. Uh, today with us is Dahlia Fami from Sports and Ortho Physical Therapy. Hi guys, how are you? Hey Dahlia. Hi. Um, so I was looking over. You guys have some cool stuff you're working with over there. Um, what kind of equipment do you guys use at Sports and Ortho that's different than the other places? Well, you know, I figured if I'm going to rehab some firefighters and police officers, we better have things that they use. So we actually have drag dummies. We've got stretchers. I've got my own fire engine on the south side. We've got some ladders and some hoses and um, a couple of punching bags. Yeah. So you hear that, Vince? They've even got a couple of Steve <laughs> over there. Oh, I can't, I can't say his last name. Um, they've we'll got a couple of Steves over we got there. A couple of Steves. <laughs> um, yeah, no, and, and looking over, like your your staff over there is trained incredibly. Yeah, we like really, really highly train our staff to know how the body moves in motion. So we just, you know, spend a lot of money training them, making sure that they're well trained to take care of all the patients that we have, but especially those fire and police officers that we treat. Well, Dahlia, I know that uh, you guys have been around for 17 years and we talked that you got your start with your first actual patient was a Chicago fireman. Yeah. You know, we want to uh, let everybody know that if you come to sports and ortho physical therapy, that is, it is covered by our city program for rehabilitation. Absolutely. Yep. We'd love to have everybody come see us. Awesome. Dal, you guys have seven locations. Uh, where can people find you guys at? Well, they can look us up at sportsandortho.net. All our locations are listed there. That's probably the best way to find us. Go check out Dali over there, um, sportsandortho.net. Dan, didn't you have that happen to you too? Didn't you didn't you get hurt and sit out and then something happened? Yeah. Yeah, right? Yeah. Oh, it was the same type of thing. Okay. Do you wanna do you wanna tell the story? Yeah, I'll tell it. I uh Do you still I mean there is a feeling of guilt? Do I? Yeah. No. Okay. Um I we are we were pretty successful when I first went out to uh uh, I got in Afghanistan. I was there for a long time, just training and doing uh, ops around the big base at, at Kandahar. Uh, six, six months, almost seven months of just sitting around trying to get out to the fobs, trying to push forward. Nobody bought into the dog concept very well. And uh, finally, they, they bought into it, and we went out. We went on a few missions, and September, uh, September 17th, I rolled over an IED and got blown up. Uh, I broke my right leg. Uh, my right foot, all the bones in my right foot, and I got. When you to, said you rolled over uh, in a vehicle, yeah, okay, yeah, I, we were in a a, a Land Rover Discovery. Myself <laughs> and my partner. There's another dog guy. The two dog guys were in the back, and we we went over this area called Roller Coaster Hill. And what what we did is we went out and back the same route. So we went out, and we didn't leave anybody to clear that area. And the the funny part is the other guy's name is Al Bogus, and I'm friends with him today, and he's really struggling, and. uh uh, we were arguing about about something. He goes, man, you're so fucking stupid. You can't even drive a stick shift. He was from West Virginia. <laughs> Al goddamn bogus. He was, I was he was from Argentina. I was, <laughs> the gears. I was jamming the gears trying to get up the roller coaster hill. You go up and dip. Story about that when you get done. And I went up the hill, and I swear to God, 
as the thing went off, I thought I blew up the transmission. I was such a bad <laughs> driver. And we blew up, and all I remember is us both, the vehicle's in air, I'm in air, he's in air. He goes, oh, dear God, they got us. <laughs> <laughs> so we, 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 both, we both broke our inside legs. My inside foot, his inside foot. He had shrapnel in the face, I had shrapnel in the face. We were lucky. And I got a video of it, and uh, me laying there, and, and the guy comes running up, and he's filming it, and he goes, is this your first time blowing up? And I go, actually, yes. And I had no shirt on. I cut my shirt <laughs> off, and I, I'll, I'll oh, bring that video. God in. damn, if I could see that video, you with no shirt on. <laughs> this, about, this episode brought to you by yeah. Land Rover. Yeah. <laughs> uh, How cool is that to have that on video, though? Yeah, it was pretty cool. Well, we, yeah. You tell that jag off maybe to hold security, rear like yeah. outside security, but hey, whatever. Thanks, guy. <laughs> so we, YOLO. So I went back. I went back to the states. I was with in at that time. It was in ODA three nine one third group, and I went back. And they rotated out uh, over Thanksgiving. Another unit went out and rolled over another ID, and two young twenty fifth kids got killed. Uh, Jacob Fleischer and uh, Jacob Fleisch, Fleicher, Fracker and Fleischer. And uh, yeah, you were talking about them. Yeah, uh, and we do. I do every Thanksgiving. I do a ten mile road march on yeah. that day to honor them. And uh, so they they got killed. They got killed rolling over an IED. I was there specifically to walk in front of the vehicles to find IEDs. Could I have found it? It was an area that I knew. It was in a, an area that we traveled many times. It was a known suspected place. I'd like to think maybe I could have, you know, who knows? I don't know. I don't know. And when I came back from my, from, from that convalescence, I came back uh, right after Halloween and I stayed in the fob until that happened. I was back on Kandahar. The next day, I was on a bird going right back out. I, I linked up with 7th Group. And now, I was mad. So we, the, yeah, this is yeah. what you're talking about with Escalini. I was, I was at that level 10. I was there. And I tried to, I got the same dog. I went to the same fob that I had just been blown up at with a brand new team of young new guys. Now I was a vet. And I was going to, I tried to kill everything. They, 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 had, they turned me loose. And now Remy, Remy's, the the best thing about that dog She's in. was was Remy in the vehicle when you, Remy was you, in the vehicle and you, you can see in the video like, they're filming us they film me they film Al he's sitting there he's all bloody and then they go the dog's okay and they go yep the dogs are okay <laughs> that's awesome so they didn't get the dog the whole front of the vehicle is gone blew the front of the vehicle off uh, and it was just we we're luck completely luck that we got you know whatever we did the area that you everywhere got. around us and uh, so after that I went after everything and I tried to get that's where I had. I had a lot of significant action after that. I had a lot of, I, I took it upon myself to be, to get after it. Yeah. And I did. <clears throat> I know exactly what you're talking about. So you and Remy really, that was the worst thing these guys could do was the blow oh, you yeah. guys off. Because yeah. you came back with a vengeance. <laughs> you, and, you and Remy had a debt to so settle. So Remy's greatest strength was our, our intuitive bond. He knew what I want when I wanted it. And it was phenomenal. So if, I were, if I'm going to give him a bath, he would stand there and, and be, be still while I was giving a bath. If I wanted to, to, you know, him to go out and turn on and go to work, he would go to work. He was, he was the perfect, we had this intuitive bond. That's what his great strength was. He wasn't the best biting dog I ever had. He wasn't the best smelling dog mm -hmm. I ever had. He, sure. we had it, what it was is our mental connection. But what you wanted, he did. Which is better than he anything, was an I'm extension, sure. He was an extension of me. Right. And, I, and, I, and I, knew, I, I knew that that's what was working. I knew that that was the key. So if I said, I wanted to, I want to bite that guy, he would bite that guy. Yeah. And I didn't have to tell him, I didn't have to point, I didn't have to, he just knew. And that's, that's how we operate. And we were. How we were hard team. was it when you went out to see him mm -hmm. to leave? Like, I imagine like, oh. yeah. yeah, I want to break you down. Fuck yeah. this. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm having a hard time. You yeah. struggle. <laughs> so yeah, I can imagine it blows my mind. I, I, so my second year was up and I came back and the dog belongs to He's property of the army. He's not right. mine. So a new handler came in, and I transitioned over. And the first first couple of days, he would woo, he wouldn't operate for the new handler. He'd whine and cry for for the new handler. Wow. And I kept walking by. And the first day I walked by, and he ran back to see me. He, the guy's over, he's trying to train and bond with his dog, and his dog runs over to see me. The second time he does it, that, that happens again. I do it for like a week, and after like four or five times, he comes over. He goes, "You know what, hey Sergeant, you're not doing me any favors." You're not helping us. You're not, you know, you're not helping this thing at all. So I stayed away for a little while, let him form that bond. And the day before I left, or it might have been the day I left, I walked past, and I don't know if he saw me or he didn't see me, 
but he wasn't even focused on me. He didn't smell me. He didn't look at me. He was focused <laughs> on that guy. Right, right. He had transitioned. He was that good a dog. Wow. That, that wow. he transitioned to that guy. And then when I How special came, is that? And when I came to see him later, he bounded back up to me like I would like we were right back, you know, sure. eight years eight years prior. Sure. He came bounding right up back to me. That's it was, crazy, man. It was amazing. So you wound up working with Remy after a break? Like you, you were separated for him for a while and yeah. then you came back and you got to yep. work with Remy again so, in a second deployment. Yes. So I, I had, I, I had a broken leg. I, I broke my tibia and all my metatarsals and I have, uh, pins put in them. And I, this happened September 17th and I was back in country, uh, by October, probably said probably November 5th, November 6th, somewhere right on the first of November. And I, did, I had to take another until Thanksgiving, probably another two weeks. And, and I couldn't get out of the file. I couldn't get up fast. I could barely walk. <laughs> I was I was gimping around. So one of the things that they said, at, uh, Kandahar Airfield has an eight-mile uh, track around the airfield. And I kept bugging him, to, hey, I want to get out. I need to get back out. I couldn't even walk. So the the one medic, the the Delta goes, hey, you you do a ruck march. You do 35 pounds to Army Standard <laughs> around the, the, the field, track, yeah. around the track, and I'll let you back. You know, you know, I'll sign you. You can go back. So, like, four hours later, I'm dragging my leg around. I remember, like, a British patrol goes, are you okay? You all right, mate? You want to ride? Fuck you. And I, I was just dragging my leg. I, I was, oh, this, oh. I, I could barely make it. It took me, like, four hours to do, like, eight miles. I was, that was horrible. So I come back. Four, four hours is standard for 12 miles. Yeah. 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 That, was, that was the way I was dragging. I was dragging. And he goes, no. Dan can do back. 12 in, what, like, three yeah, I, I can still, yeah, yeah. yeah. still do go right rocks. Right Stuck yeah. today. Yeah. 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 Right. So I was dragging. So we get back to the, get back to the FOB and, think, and they said, hey, did you hear about what happened out at uh, De Raoud, which was at Firebase Tykes? I said, no, they, they, something happened. They had a tick. I go, okay, what happened? And they say, yeah, they had two, they had two KAA, another wound in action. They're coming in now. And I go, oh man, I know everybody there. So it's going to be somebody I know. And sure enough, it was these two young cats, uh, Fracker and Fleischer. And, so when you said ticks, it troops and content. Troops and content. Okay. Yeah, sorry. Oh, so, good one. Yeah, good catch. Right. Mm. So they came in. We had the ramp ceremony for them, and I knew who they were. There's a couple other guys back from me, you know, ooh, cry, like a, a like a little bitch. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> I got you caught yourself there. Like, Fuck it. <laughs> so he let it go. He stopped, and then yeah. he went. Yeah, I'm committed I'm at this point. So, yeah. uh, the next day, I got they they didn't care. Once that happened, they didn't care if I could walk. They didn't care if they was, you're out. You're, you're right back, right back yeah. in. And I spent the first, at least another six months kind of gimping around and whatever. And it finally healed up and everything's good. But I, I spent a while kind of gimping around. I used to do, I couldn't run on the treadmill. I couldn't run. So I would do the elliptical machine. So it's funny that you, you brought that up about the uh, guys coming back at the time. Like you're still, you're still in theater. You're still yeah. in country. And so, some guys struggle with it. Some guys in. And I'm, I'm not going to sit there and judge, but I in theater, it didn't affect me too much. Tom's did because we we had some downtime immediately yeah. after. Yeah. Um. But after I got out, and you start getting those yeah. texts, and those phone calls, it's like, you're that that hits hard. The Lincoln Wood thing is you're gonna when we get into this. Yeah. That's you guys. You two saw me struggle a lot. Yeah, uh, I I had to leave in, in medic school because one of my team members got killed in in Iraq. Or, I'm sorry, in Afghanistan, and I had to go to his funeral. And uh, later on, as we would go, uh, one of the things that I don't know if I actually got, I went out and sought mental help, and I got I went to some. Did you? And, yeah, yeah. I wound up going to a place called Boulder Crest Retreat, okay. and it was an when, inpatient. Could I ask a time frame? Oh, is this when you like met the football player out there? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I okay. know this. Yeah, 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 so, yeah, 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 yeah. So I went out and and, and you said that they, they really helped you a lot, right? It did. Yeah, it did. I remember you and, telling me that. And I'll be honest with you, minus the alcohol, uh, it isn't much different than this. Yeah, it's it, they have a lot of tricks and tools. Um, <laughs> I learned transcendental sure. meditation. I learned a, but a lot of it was this guys that have had similar experiences all sitting around, and you own your shit. You, you, this is, you know, I, I, I didn't, you talk about with the things that you did and way more, way worse, way to a greater degree. Uh, 
and you you have to own that, you know. And what are you what are you proud of? And then what are you most ashamed of? And it's moments like that when you you know you're owning your shit in front of you know seven other guys, and one of the guys goes he goes I hate you motherfuckers. You see me cry more than my mama. <laughs> <laughs> And, but it's true. That's the and, best about having so many different people and so many different backgrounds. Is just like, yeah, anything, anything's free. But then it's all the same. Yeah, and, you know yeah, I mean? right. Like, it's so different, but the same. Yeah, it all ends up being the same at the end. It's just for you three here. You would recommend for somebody who's struggling because you struggled when you were at Lincoln Wood. You wound up getting help. A recommendation from you guys would be like to go seek that help. Go talk to somebody. Find somebody who you can relate to. I, I, say, I, I want to be more specific yeah. than that. We, we, I want to yeah. talk. I'm looking at this unfold, but I want to. I want to really hit that part of it hard. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Definitely talk to somebody that can not even necessarily relate, but can understand where you're coming from. Uh, Are it, we at that part yet? Where are we at now? Um, Close. Yeah, we're about there. Um, Damien too. So. Yeah, let's talk about Dave. Yeah, we'll okay. When we get to it, we'll get it. I want to hit that on. We're right there. Uh, so we had Jimmy's raid where uh, I wanted to kill, uh, well, <laughs> where I struggled with the the uh, third victim, the third, whatever. I want to kill a kid. And uh, so th- that kind of sparked you, kind of what seems like you going down. This is all years later yeah. where I realized this. Right, this, but but at, at this, but this point in the timeline, yeah. this is really like triggering some issues with you. Yeah. So yeah. at the time, like literally, Gunny said, "I asked, what does a kid know?" He says everything. I literally never thought about it again. All right, I'm like all right, he wants the kid now. Whatever, he wants intel. I, it wasn't until literally ten, twelve years later where I realized I, I thought he he thought I meant letting him go. I'm like, that's yeah. not what I meant. But um, so I asked for that break. So yeah, that, Frank that, got, that's Frank where got, we're at right now. Is, Kenny comes back in the room, throws his stuff down. I said, "Frank's going home." I'm like, "Motherfucker!" Uh, he got shot in the leg again, but this time directly, and he broke his leg real bad. He was going home. There wasn't any crutches limping anymore. Like we were walking like away last time when we were yeah. walking through. Foolish, just me and him. Right, and uh. So I, I felt like shit. I'm sitting there with a fucking belly ache, you know, to take Mike's, my buddy Mike's term. And uh, Frank gets shot in the leg. I'm like, God damn it. Uh, so I'm like, I'm not doing that again. Mm-hmm. Not not going out on the raid. And uh, next yeah, raid comes. If you're comes, here, you're here. Yeah. I mean, there's a gap between all this stuff. But sure. the next raid um I talked to the skipper. I'm like, I can't do that again. <laughs> it's mm-hmm. just not going to happen. He's like, how about you drive? Which I fucking hated driving. I didn't even have a driver's license until I was in the Marine Corps. First time I drove for more than five minutes was from Camp Al-Assad to Camp Fallujah on night vision Christ. goggles. No joke. <laughs> no joke. Remember the uh, do you, uh, the breath uh, yeah, yeah, breathalyzer yeah. test? The, the, the yeah. mom administered <laughs> breathalyzer. So, uh, like, all right, I'll drive. Which Mom, sucks because it's even more dangerous than going in the house most of the time. I mean, I don't know what I was yeah. thinking. Uh, so I was sitting there. I remember I was sitting in the driver's seat. I'm like, fuck this. I get out. I open the door, and I'm just kind of at least holding security with my rifle. Mm-hmm. Listen to Frisky talk to the pilots and check the rooftops like I talked about earlier. All of a sudden, I, I hear contact in the house. Motherfucker. And... uh I don't. I can't tell you what happened because I wasn't in there. But uh, what I was told was Damien came came down the hallway and I saw a guy standing with an AK and he took him out. Fine, nothing wrong with that. It's what we're supposed to do. But the fact I'm like, we had another one, and I wasn't in there. It fucking right. killed me. It's fucking like you think my stomach hurt before. Now I'm like I'm being fucking torn apart inside. Who's Damien? Damien was another guy from my platoon, and. uh you nope. go back with him, or young, young guy, old guy? Yeah, uh, he was a younger guy. Like about came on. Uh, replacement guy? No, not a no, replacement guy. Okay. Original guy. Okay. Um, and uh, Damien killed, hit, hit, shot the guy. Dan- nobody got hurt on our side. Yeah. yeah. Um, 
but it still it fucked me up that I was like, I wasn't in there for it. Like, what if it didn't, you know? Yeah. So afterwards, I'm like, I can't, I can't do this again. This is way worse than being miserable going in. I'll figure it out. Yeah. So I went up to my skipper. I'm like, not again. He's like, okay, no problem. Uh, not skipper, Gunny at the time. Um, I got, I'm, I want to go in. Mm. And uh, that was that was the last raid we did. Mm. So <laughs> see you back. So you didn't have to go. There was no re- opportunity for you. Nope. That was it. That was it. Nice. Then you get back. That's just straight water. No, it's melted. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the, uh, fucking high road him. <laughs> oh, <laughs> out. Yeah, what the fuck? The, uh, so so you get back. Watch. So I I had a real. Our, I'm not even back yet. Uh, no, I mean from the raid. Yeah. I told him I wanted, I mean, I, I definitely wanted it back in. Yeah. But we, we didn't have an opportunity to. Yeah. I felt, fuck, this kills me. I felt like after all that, all those stories, and it's only, fuck, it's probably about half of them. Uh, I, I felt like I went out with a whimper, you know? Yeah. <laughs> One of the, the, Big pieces of wisdom that I got from uh, going out to that that place and meeting uh, the the football player Oren. He said, "Football in the NFL is a lot like the military; it never ends the way you think it's gonna." <laughs> and that's the truth. It, and and I yeah. really took that to heart. That that he was he was uh, the rookie of the year in fourteen, and then first game of the the next year he he like completely screws up his foot or his knee or his ankle. I can't remember what it was, and he's out. And he tried to, you know, come back and tried to go a couple more years, but never really, you know, he was a guy with all that great potential right. and just never finished it. And from what I've, from what I've talked to, and I know a lot of guys that are in similar situations that, that to me is one of the big, and I hate to say the word killers, but that's one of the big killers yeah. of yeah. guys that think that they didn't leave it all on the, like you, you talk about fighting, right? If you go in a fight, you go in the ring and you don't leave it all in the ring. You think, man, I could, I had a little. Like, if I just would have, you know, stepped it up the last, whatever, whatever it was. Sure. That's a killer. That's the the big yeah. killer yeah. guys. Yeah. Well, and, and that's, I was gonna say, like, that's the nonsense of like our own ego maniacal story. Is that like I'm gonna go out like Rocky? I'm gonna go out like like Arnold did in, in Predator. Like you're thinking that like this is the last hurrah. Where like reality is like you you give it all. You can't like. Like was like he's, you're putting this time operating a hundred ten percent, and and you're coming up towards the end, and you're coming up towards the end of of your operating efficiency, you know, and like, yeah, mentally, yeah. physically, you're 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 breaking down, you know, like you're shutting it down, and like, but, but like you said, Danny, like you, you're going out, you like you want to go out, like like Apollo Creed did. And like it's just it's that's not what reality is. I want to throw the last touchdown in the Super Bowl, spike <laughs> it, and then we're right. done. And you're done. Every and you walk off like Rudy. Michael Jordan like every yeah. single yeah. time. And yeah. nobody gets. You that. want to be carried off the field like Rudy. Yeah. yeah. And <laughs> nobody gets that. Do you remember <laughs> uh, that movie? Was it Colors? When great uh, movie. Oh, you can't say that. Yeah. Uh, when the guy, uh, the the game bangers, the guy goes down shooting. And uh, the guy's like, "Holy fuck, that's like the best way to go out." Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> you know, what I mean? it's it's almost like that. You would almost rather go down fighting, yeah, yeah. than to have it just fucking. Stop. Well, I've I've struggled with that. Like me too, bro. Well, I use Tom and Dave more so than anybody else. It's just because I was probably the closest with those two. But I can insert any any name, any of your friends' names into this. Yeah. Um, like I thought, like, are they better off? You know, and I've never, don't get me wrong, I never, stru- I, I personally have never struggled with the suicide thing. It's never been an option. Um, but at the same point, but then I'm, then it's just another asshole sitting here doing a fucking podcast talking about me then. I, it makes no, it makes no, it changes nothing. Right. And that's where, it, I guess it's a good time to segue into, into handling this stuff. Like, it's okay to be upset about this stuff, but I, I found, and it wasn't, it, honestly, it wasn't until, a couple of years ago when my grandmother died, it's completely fucking random, uh, where I was talking to my mom and she was super upset and and what I apparently what I said to her really comforted her. It, it, until, it wasn't then until I realized, like, I just appreciated being in the significant moment, being a part of it. 
I'm not going to sit here and talk about what Dave would have become or what Tom would have become. It's, it's a waste of time. Yeah. Well, what am I accomplishing being here? I'm doing them a disservice. Right. I can enjoy what I had with them. Sure, absolutely. Yeah. But I'm, I'm just honored to be a part of any story whatsoever that concerns them. And I found peace into that. Yeah. And it makes sense to me. And I hope that helps other people that are struggling. I mean, I, it, may, I, it makes sense in my head. Um, but I'm not going to sit here and waste time thinking about something that's not possible. Right. It's not going to happen. Are you at peace with the way you left? I don't know if I'll ever be at peace with the way I left. But let's say that you went and inside not on fall. that final raid. Nothing and you were went wrong. Right. right. On but, that raid. That's but a would you apart. feel better yeah. if you were inside and that, for your final raid? And that, of all the times I've, I've, I've prided myself in not being self-preservation, that is self-preservation. Yeah. At what would have been different? Right. Well, yeah. and here's the thing. Here's well, the that, fucked that, up That's thing. what I was going to get to is <sighs> no, right. nothing. Whether you were standing I just there at had the vehicle never had or been, appointment, I just never had an opportunity to yeah. say fuck it. And, it and, didn't end the way you wanted it to end. Yeah. And, and here's the money like motor quarterback thing. Life. Like, who's, <laughs> who's to say that things end up, end up as good as they did if you were there? Like, right. What if things would have went maybe worse? Maybe I went left when Damien went right. Yeah, who, maybe, who maybe knows? Fucking, yeah, you could what it, if it got that? worse. Yeah. So, it so the outcome being positive it's is just, definitely a good situation. It's just that. Yeah. It's just me being cynical. Yeah. It's just, well, I mean, look where you are now, and the, things worked out. Things work out for a reason. I'm a firm believer of that, and I'm not. Well, <laughs> I mean, yeah, and we could talk about like, well, is, the things yeah. I struggle with now. Let's talk about Dave. Grass an open area. Dave gets shot in the head. I don't. Dave gets a purple heart. I get a purple heart. Moving on. How the fuck is that right? You can't you can't justify it. It is what it is. But you're only seeing it from a pr- your, your ridiculously your, cynical point of view. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I get it. I, I, and I, I, I've been able to move on since then. I'm not stuck in plus, this. Plus, yeah. I think a lot of people think of like, and honestly, Brian, like me, and I think me and you are cut from the same cloth when it comes to like how fucking cynical motherfuckers we are. But like. You're thinking of a per, of the perspective, which which I think the same way of like, man, if Dave knew he got a purple heart, like Dave doesn't give a fine no, fuck. No, like, no, he like, like probably laughing. I was gonna say Dave was the kind of guy going <laughs> yeah. back where he'd be like, I don't, I don't give a fuck no. what kind of metal I got, like, no, you no. know. But like, but it's hard not to think that way from from where we're at. You get your final raid. You take us past that, like. Where does your military career go from there? How so, like how did you know that that would, so the last was your thing, was your contract up at that point? No, not yet. I had a few more months left. Um, but they were just rotating. We finished you guys the raid. Out. We we ended probably with a solid two weeks to a month of not doing much, if anything. Um, and uh, <laughs> quick funny story: I never worked out. On deployment was my thing. <laughs> I'm not a workout guy. <laughs> and uh, what's so what's so just funny? A, you're just a natural. Style. What's so funny? Yeah, just, <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, that, it was my thing. Some guys did. I'm like, I don't what know. Where do those I- stairs go to up there? <laughs> a gym? We have a gym? What's a gym? Dude, if um, I don't work out for like God. a day, I'm a piece of shit. <laughs> the, uh, I just wasn't my wasn't my thing. I didn't enjoy it. I at the beginning of the deployment, I figured out why would I waste my energy here when I could use it tonight at the rate, but whatever. Uh, so it wasn't until one of the last few days, I'm like, I'll go for a run. I fucking hate running. Never enjoyed it in my entire life. I go for a run. As I'm running, I hear, this is out of Camp Fallujah. I hear, doom, 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 doom. I'm like, motherfucker. They're launching rockets or mortars at us. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm running down the main road in Camp Fallujah, and I hear, bow, bow, bow. <laughs> it's just going off. I mean, it's not even close. It's like two, 300 yards away from me. But I come running to the tent, and everyone's dying laughing. Like, you haven't worked out once. But <laughs> the first time you do it. This is why I don't up. run. <laughs> That's right why here. I don't run. <laughs> right. And to this day, that was your fastest time ever, right? <laughs> so, uh, yeah. it just, I used to just piss in the uh, water bottles, the giant 40, what were they, like 40, well, a liter, yeah, 40 right, pounds, right, whatever. Guys. 
I would just piss in those in my room and then throw them out in the morning. We had the porta potties like kind of right outside of our building, hospital, whatever. So I, I decide like in the middle of the night, like, okay, I'm going to go take a piss in this porta potty, whatever. So I go out there and I take a piss. And as I come out, same thing, they're dropping mortars. It's on the <laughs> other side of the camp, whatever, but it was like, boom, 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 boom. I sprint back into the building. And the same thing, the people in there were like, why are you sweating, you fucking pussy? <laughs> <laughs> they were nowhere near I, you. That was my poor squad. I always, I always sweat when I pee. That's my thing. All right, so we're going to take a quick minute, um, eat some pizza. Dan's going to talk about how much he loves spot uh, when we get back. Okay, welcome back. I know we were talking a lot about mental health throughout this podcast, and I know, Dan, you had... Uh, something you wanted to uh, elaborate on. And I know that this is something that's important to you. So we wanted to give you the opportunity to talk about it. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Uh, I wanted to, first of all, tell everybody, if you're out there struggling, um, you're not alone. You're not the only one dealing with these issues. You're not the only one that feels this way. And it's okay. It's okay to, to have these issues. It's okay to struggle and to reach out to somebody. Um, and I'm, I wanted to not just say reach out to somebody. I have a, I have a, a place particularly in mind. It's called Warrior's Heart. It's in San Antonio, Texas. Uh, they have a one eight. They have a eight 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 number. It's one eight 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 four four zero seven one zero seven. Twenty four hours a day, someone will pick up that phone. And give, they that, do, give that number out one more time. It's eight 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 four four zero seven one zero seven. Okay, and that's Warrior's Heart. Correct. Warrior's Heart. It's in San Antonio, Texas. And they are a uh, substance abuse and PTSD uh, treatment facility. And they do on-site uh, uh, substance abuse. Uh, it's an inpatient. You can do uh, counseling. And then it can transition right into uh, the PTSD or traumatic brain injury and, and counseling services. And it, it, this is a long-term place. It's, this isn't going to be a, a quick fix. It's not a, a two hour or two day thing. Um, it takes a while to, it took a while to get this and it took take a while to get past it. But these guys are the, the best in the business at uh, doing the real deal healing and recovery that vets, firefighters, police officers, EMS need. And it's open to all of those, all of those. So this isn't just a military thing. This no. is for first responders, military. Yes. Well, how do you know these guys, Danny? Uh, I know them. I know them personally. Uh, that they uh, have helped, helped a lot of guys that I'm friends with and know. Uh, helped me personally. Uh, they're phenomenal. About if, if you're if you're in your darkest hour, you're in jail. If they caught you naked with a gun in your mouth, whatever it is, this is a place where you you can call them up and they'll bring you in and they'll get you cleaned up, sober, and then move on with your treatment. It's all run and and. Um, Staffed and facility by veterans. It's by veterans for veterans. It's there's only us. Dan, do you think that with all of the COVID stuff, I, I I haven't felt as much of an effect of like how horrible it's been working in a hospital or being on an ambulance. Do you think they would be able to help those type of people? Like if you're in California, which is really like struggling first right now. Aspect yeah, more first than responder, the nurse, PA, doctor. You think they would be able to help those types of people too? Uh. Again, specifically that I, what I'm f f uh, familiar with is military, police, fire. Uh, I think that certainly deserves that type of treatment with doctors. Sure. Uh, and this is something they could, they could look into. And if they, don't, if they don't specifically do that for you, I think that they could uh, get they'll, you to the right place. I was just they saying, they'll get find you the right the place. Yeah, need. they'll get you the help you need. Awesome. Just because these are such strange times Absolutely. and we yeah. are all... It's a great question. We're all dealing across the country with something that is pretty unprecedented. You know what I mean? So like, I'm sure there's going to be a lot of people very soon. that are going to need a lot of help, you know? Okay. Uh, so that number again, 888-440-7107. If you're struggling, you need some help. Warrior Heart. Yeah. Please check them out. Do you guys have, what's the website, Danny? Warriorsheart.com. Warriorsheart.com. All right, but well, well, Brian, does that kind of transition into where we are with you right now? Because you're finishing up in Iraq right now, and you're looking for another mission at this point, right? 
At this point, uh, we're uh, finishing up with the deployment, and we're getting ready to to return back to the States. Um, the strange thing about this deployment was that, uh, unlike the last one with the grunts, it took us a month. We went by ship, and we floated back. So it was a lot of uh, like egress time, I guess. <laughs> Decompressing time. We, we worked out a lot every day. You know, I put two and took pride in how much we worked out. Uh, this time Except it was you. like... 12, yeah. No, at the time, <laughs> at that time, I did. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> I deserve that. Uh, he could have run as far. It was like, we're in Iraq, 18 hours later, we're in, we're in North Carolina. It was kind of a culture shock. Wow. Yeah. And my, my mom's there. I'm like, what the fuck's happening? Like, what? <laughs> wait a minute. I just We just got mortared about 24 hours ago. Yeah. What's going yeah. on? I can uh, see So th- there's definitely a, an adjustment there. But it, what was kind of cool about the second one, so the first time was the beginning of the war. Uh, we were the first like group back because we were at the, be- the beginning push of the war. So there was like we came back, we floated in. There was a parade, of people lining the streets, balloons, cannons with confetti, all everything. Yeah. It was a big show. Yeah. This time it was second force recon. We flew in quietly. We got in the bus and we drove back to the company compound. It was there was nothing. It was there was absolutely yeah. nothing. And it's actually kind of nicer that way to be honest with you. Yeah. Um, kind of a surreal moment, but it was it was. No decompressing time, so it took a it took a, a strange kind of effect on everybody, I guess. Um, after that, I gotta imagine. I gotta imagine there were guys that were expecting more coming back. I, you know what? I never, were, I, I've never had that conversation. I imagine that's definitely a case. Like, right. did somebody not show up? Somebody, you know, who knows? I, right. I, I and knows. for you guys, I mean, it definitely sounds like it was did, a relief right now. Did you have any sort of like uh, I don't know what's the word reindoctrination? I guess like no. We, okay. We had like uh, three weeks of doctors checking us and talking to a therapist and like getting really? all your. Well, nobody ever said anything out. though. It was like, how do you feel? I feel fine. Oh, okay, good. And then they check the box and you're done. No shit. Yeah. No, not that I can remember. No. You didn't have any of that though. Okay. Wow. Uh, just coming home and just, hey, you're unfucked, right? Like, oh, okay. Yeah, basically. Like, it was mostly like. Pay stub, paperwork. Yeah, that was when I know. got out of the Marine Corps. It was like that. Yeah, uh, for me I'm, too. I'm not crazy. You know, just sign your sign this check. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We check had three weeks of opportunity home. of like, yeah. do you have any aches and pains? Do you feel crazy? Do you want to kill yourself? No. And somebody just checks a box and you're yeah, fucking done. A bunch but of bullshit. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, so you're coming home. I don't remember how. I honestly, I should be completely guessing right now if I remember how the timeline went. Uh, I'm sure I had some leave at home. Uh, kind of a crazy time. I, I didn't, it sounds so extreme, but preparing to go there and being home were two completely different mindsets. Going there, I literally thought that was it. I said my goodbyes. I, gotta, I know it sounds extreme but it's kind of and cheesy, but it is what it is. Coming back, it was kind of, it was very anticlimactic. It was kind of just like, well, that didn't happen. Now what? You know, the first time it was like, okay, well, now I want revenge. Well, this time I I learned other stuff where I'm like, I don't want anything anymore. I want to be left the fuck alone. Right. This, this is my five-year plan. Yeah. <laughs> um, whatever. I couldn't even tell you what I did on my home leave. Um, came back in. We had a few months of getting out, and uh, the platoon started their buildup. They did that second Marine Special Operations Battalion thing. I remember they went to Yuma, Arizona for some training, and I stayed back. Uh, I had a month by myself in the barracks. Oh, literally, I had no one to report to. I didn't have to go to the company office because my platoon was in Arizona. I'm like, I don't want to get it, go home. I'm going to get in trouble. So I just literally did nothing for a month. I, I sat on the computer. You were short by this time. Like, you, yeah, I was getting out. Now. Okay. I was getting out. Well, it was, there was, uh, it was hanging over our shows. Like, hey, do you want to really listen? I, I never said no officially yet. Um, so just kind of leaving it all alone kind of thing. I didn't want to deal with it. And uh, all I did was just drink and gamble. Yeah. At the time, online poker was really big. I, I think I had about sixteen grand in the bank from the from the deployment because you're getting paid while you're deployed and you're not spending it. Yeah. I, I, I don't know the exact numbers, but I know at one point I was down about ten grand, and at another time <laughs> I was even. Like I won ten grand back. I'm like, I better stop this. Like it's. A, I remember I was like five or six seats out of a world seat of the World Series of Poker. Like I was, <laughs> I was right. going crazy with this stuff. I right. wasn't. I just was smoking and drinking. I had nothing else to do. I didn't have a car. Yeah. 
<laughs> <Can't> <laughs> I didn't have a that. car. It's just what I was doing, you know? And it was kind of funny because once Al, who was running the platoon, was like, why don't you just tell me? I would have just sent you home to Chicago for the month. Like, what? I mean, it might have been a little bit more Cool. Fun, Fuck yeah. me, man. Thanks for <laughs> thanks yeah. for letting me know. Yeah. Thanks for <laughs> letting me know now. Yeah. yeah. Um, getting out. Uh, the last couple of days, kind of a cool story. My my At the time, my, my two closest buddies, Chris and Mike from you know, Chris since kindergarten, Mike since like third grade, fourth grade from Cub Scouts, um, came up on a road trip to pick me up all the oh, way shit. out to the, the Force Recon Barracks. It was kind yeah. of in its own little area, you know. And uh, we had a couple nights of just like some solid barbecuing and drinking. And my going away present was they took my rifle that I owned and it was a, a heavy barrel uh, 308 rifle. Mm. And they took it. And they put a Marine Corps McMillan st- sniper stock on it, oh, and uh, glasses stock. Like really, dialed this thing up like yeah. high end oh, yeah. stuff. And I had the a uh, really expensive Marine Corps sniper rifle, Unertal ten power scope. Like it actually like, USMC serial oh, number, yeah. everything is like legit. So I'm uh, I was basically building a Marine Corps sniper rifle. Uh, my going away present was a barbecue and uh, free for all at Hathcock Range. Uh, I might get in trouble for this, but um, the uh, sniper school range in the Marine Corps. It's like the nicest range in the Marine Corps. Carlos Hathcock. Carlos Hathcock. Hathcock Range. Uh, so we barbecued there. We had every weapon we had access to from any armory. Huh. We just told the guy, we're like, hey, we're with Second Force Recon. We're going to do some training. We're in like <laughs> some hoodies and <laughs> jeans <laughs> and barbecue and drinking beer. By the end of it, we're... Sitting in the back of pickup trucks, firing automatic M4s, <laughs> like the like the most pristine party. range in yeah. the Marine Corps. Uh, that was my big going away party. That was pretty special. I, I have a picture uh, with me and Frank uh, shooting the uh, my my rifle that they just gave back to me. We hit a target at a thousand yards. That was like the furthest range they had at the uh, at the furthest target they had at the range, and that's the last time I fired it. I have, I'm like, I don't want to put it away. That's let's, it. Let's mess around with the other stuff. Uh, I got out. Uh, next morning, we're getting ready to get out. L- literally, the the mini U-Haul trailers full. We're literally leaving the Marine Corps right now. Yeah. And my buddy Shep has uh, uh, the duty, the second force recon barracks, which is brutal because nobody gives a shit. Like liter- literally, like guys start fires and like you, what do you? You literally have no control whatsoever. Yeah. Huh. Uh, not that Shep would want control. He's probably starting it, but. Uh, yeah. Uh, he's standing there, and he looks at me. He's like, he just re-enlisted for four more years. He was just behind me in the enlistment cycle. He, yeah. He's like, I'm really starting to regret my decision. <laughs> no shit. <laughs> like, well, see you later. <laughs> yeah. So I leave. Um, I go home. We do the road trip home. Uh, it wasn't until about four or five months later I get a call from Shep. <laughs> I'll never forget this. Every time I talk to him, I always say, like, I can't believe you're still alive. He'd be like, I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> he calls me. And he's like, hey, what's up? Like, what are you doing? There's nothing. I'm home. I'm like, I thought you were deploying. He's like, I did. I'm like, are you, are you okay? Did you get hurt? Like, what are you doing back? He's like, no, I got kicked out. I'm like, I'm like kicked out of what? I'm like, uh, you kicked out of the Marine Corps? He's no, no, I didn't kicked out of the Marine Corps. I got kicked out of Iraq. I'm like, how do you get kicked out of Iraq? <laughs> he goes, Waz, they said I was too aggressive. I'd never been more proud of myself in my entire life. <laughs> <laughs> I'll never forget that Too conversation. For Iraq. That's it. I mean, that's a medal for sure. <laughs> How do you do that? Is that a thing? Uh, so my my whole plan, and this sounds kind of silly, uh, I wa- my plan was not to get a job out of the Marine Corps uh, right away. Yeah. Uh, I just wanted to relax. I'd been through quite a bit. <laughs> Hey, I feel like that's understandable. I mean, yeah, you're, um, you're deserved a vacation at this point. So I was, my mom had sold the house at home. She was living downtown. So I ended up staying by my buddy Mike's, the same guy that I was in the garage, yeah. joined the Marine Corps. And uh, it got to a point where, I mean, I was drinking. I wasn't doing anything crazy. It was excess, but it's what I planned. It was never not part of the plan. Well, through, like, roundabout meeting people, friends of family, real random stuff. They said, go meet these guys. They knew I wanted to be a Chicago fireman. Go meet these guys. It's a shift full of Marines. Go check them out. I'm like, yeah, I'm not going to do that. I don't, I don't want to be the guy that plays Marine. I did that when I was a kid. Sure. Going to see 117. I'm not going to do that. I'm a grown man now. I'm not going to do right. it. Guys are on the job. Like, no, these guys are all Marines. They're yeah. expected, whatever. 
All right, I go. It was at uh, Engine 91, Squad 2. Captain Pat Maloney was a Marine. Almost the entire shift was all Marines. Uh, he just retired. Just literally a yeah. few days ago. On Marine Corps birthday. Yes, yeah. that's right, November 10th. Because we had they, the Nelsons uh, in there. They had just come back from yeah. his retirement. The uh, great guy. The, so I went to go visit them. The weird thing was I uh, was debating whether or not to tell the story, but it's too funny not to tell. I was out at a wedding the night before. So I was out to about 4 o'clock in the morning, and I went home and I slept for about a half an hour. <laughs> I woke up and I shaved, and I go to drive to the firehouse. Shit shower shave. Bad idea. Um, yeah. I actually got pulled over going to the firehouse. I still had a North Carolina driver's license. So the cop let me go thinking, oh, you're not from around here. You know, you should know better, blah, blah, blah. I get to the firehouse. I feel like I'm holding my own. Like, I'm not, I'm drunk. I'm drunk. I didn't even realize it yet. I thought I was hungover, but I'm, I'm drunk. I'm that asshole, you know? And uh, guys are guys are great. Show me around, you know, we're trading stories, laughing and everything. They put me up in the snorkel and starts bouncing around. I'm like, oh, boy, I'm going to be so <laughs> Oh, shit. Yeah. So I might be able to hold on to it. We get down. I'm like, yeah, what's the bathroom? They tell me, I'm like, all right. <laughs> Take some couple corners. I go right out the front door, and I start throwing up. Well, they catch me. I'm throwing up. Captain Pavaloni calls me into his office. This is all, like, over a spread of time. And uh, the way I describe this, and I always get a kick out of it, is, uh, and I've talked to him about this, is the conversation I feel like I didn't need to have. He uh, gave me a little kick in the ass. And this is a guy, I, I'd never met this guy before, didn't know my family. It's just a uh, Marine helping a Marine. So uh, he basically... Was ma- making sure I was okay. You know, it wasn't wasn't too hard on me. Basically, just kind of like I said, gave me gave me the kick of the ass. I feel like I didn't need. Well, two days later, I had a job. <laughs> so, uh, I al- I always uh, appreciated that, and uh, it's kind of set me on the spiral. Like I knew I already wanted to be a Chicago fireman, but uh, it kind of showed me that there was still that that brotherhood. Like it kind of carried kind of carried over. Yeah. Like I guess you give it a shit. You know, so I uh, I got a job literally two days later. I was delivering beer. Not the best segue, but <laughs> <That's right. laughs> did that for a couple months before I did the EMT thing. Uh, met my wife in EMT school. Uh, literally, like, boom, 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 within a year, met a school, and, like, uh, shit started coming together for my life. Like, I literally, that conversation kind of put me in the right direction. I, I don't... Th- think I would have struggled without it, but it definitely helped. Didn't yeah, it didn't hurt. So I always like, uh, I'll never forget talk that. about what Maloney said to you or it wasn't even anything significant. Just basically, you know, I I am here if you need anything, like the generic stuff. There wasn't yeah. anything crazy. It was just I don't know, maybe it was just hearing somebody else say and somebody else I looked up to like the captain of a fire company in Chicago. I want to be a fireman. This guy he's right. a Marine, he's a he's captain. There. You know, I'm buying. I'm buying it. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm buying what he's selling. You know, he's there. At, uh, when you were at the Chow Hall with your buddy, and that Sergeant Major comes up, and you're not going to, you know, he offered his help, but you're not going to take it. Right. You know what I mean? But that type of stuff is. <coughs> oh yeah, I mean, it makes a gigantic impression. Yeah. yeah, I'm so stubborn where even if I know I need it, I won't take it. Yeah. But I understand the significance of you asking it, and I'll fix right. it myself yeah. kind of thing. You know what Probably I mean? Probably everybody at this table is the same way. A- absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Well, since you brought up I, – I didn't know that Pat Maloney had that influence. I've been friends with him since. Yeah. Well, so you came down to the academy, and we had known each other before you came down, and it was my first uh, – Brian's class was my first class as an instructor, and, and – this was like one of those things that just happened. Never thought about it twice until you brought up this story about Pat. But it was like, I don't know, my first or second day in the academy. I don't even know where shit is in the instructor's room or anything like that. And he comes he comes in. I think he, he was a chief at that time. I think so, yeah. And he comes no, in. No, it definitely was, yeah. It, he comes in and uh, he goes, uh, he looks at me and I'm the only one there. I'm like, <laughs> what the fuck, you know? And, he's got a command presence. Oh yeah, him. definitely. Yeah. And yeah. he's he's not like a giant guy. He's <laughs> he's you know, and he goes to me and he like pretty much basically takes his finger and he's like poking my chest. Okay, 
<laughs> and he goes to me, I'm like, what the fuck is going on? And he goes, hey, uh, you know that Brian Wozniki guy? I'm like, yes, sir, I, I do. I actually do know him. He goes, take care of that kid. He got shot three times and he just walks away. <laughs> he just walks away. And I'm like, what the fuck am I doing here? Like, what is going on here? You know? Alfredo and I have a pretty funny uh, Pat Maloney story. Oh, God, I got to so, hear this. We were partners on the ambulance, and, and when we were looking at houses, my wife and I, we, we looked at a couple houses, and Fredo came out and looked at a house with us when Pat was the, ins- when Pat was the inspector. Yeah. Oh, yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. So our realtor was one of my wife's friends. Her name is Cora. She's a sweet girl. Hi. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> she was pretty hot. And uh, wanted nothing to do with me, which really crushed me. Which, <laughs> which was she not was, for she like was a try. Crushing. Yeah. yeah. She was that hot that yeah. she wanted nothing to do with you. Yeah. And <laughs> I was still in shape and I was like uh, kind of a stud. Long time and ago. she still didn't want anything to do with me, crushing. which is very crushing. crushing it's incredible. For my, yeah. I can't I can't believe it to be I couldn't either. <laughs> <laughs> so so Pat was our inspector inspecting the house. So we put a bid down in the house. They accept, accepted our bid, and we, we had an inspector come out, and, he, and it was Pat. And he was telling us everything, and this looks like a good house, and he was really thorough and really good. And then we were done. He goes, he was giving us this little speech. He, and he said, all right, he goes, I, I think you got a good house. You got a good realtor here. You got, and he goes, just like remember. Like, has been shot in the ass three times. He goes, <laughs> just remember, it doesn't stop here. And Corey goes, yeah, 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 it doesn't stop here. He says that to everybody. <laughs> <laughs> and killed his whole wife. She was like ready to give us this heartfelt speech. Yeah. And she goes, yeah, yeah, yeah. He doesn't stop yeah. here. He just, just says that to everybody. Just <laughs> jagging him off. <laughs> jagging this guy off. And I can off. tell by looking at his face that he, never, he doesn't get that in his real life too much. Right. No. right. Some blonde going, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, shut fast up. <laughs> fast Let's forward, just move this along. Fast forward 100 years. Uh, I feel like he'd be okay with me saying this. Uh, we'd been, been in contact. We're still in contact. I talked to him not too long ago. Uh, small, crazy, small world stuff. Me and another guy actually did a little bit of training with his son. His son is now uh, a radio guy with 2nd Raider Battalion. How crazy uh, is that? Really? Yeah. That's yeah, how, how proud he must be, you know? Yeah, interesting. Yeah, so... So that definitely gave me the the kick in the ass I didn't need. Is what I like to I like to I like to describe it. But uh, so I'll never never forget that. In the oh, and the, the big thing is I I the the big joke, and I'll throw it out there because other people know it is I, I threw up on the captain's uh, wife's roses, the captain's <laughs> wife's rose bush. So you ever hear about me throwing up on the captain's squad to his wife's roses? That's what that's what they're talking about. <laughs> it was that just the the ride yeah, along day? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, when we started this podcast. You were going to school, and had you started EMT school bef- before you before nine eleven? Yes. Okay. So when you now you, it's come full circle, and you're going back to yes. EMT school. Yeah, so I'm back in EMT can, school. Did they let you pick off pick up where you left off? Oh no. So you had to start back. Yeah. Yeah. You weren't too far deep into that. I where did you go? You. Went to Wright College. Wright College. Yeah. Okay. I couldn't tell you where I was when I left. Or, yeah. yeah. So you just you 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 signed just up did, again. Basically, did it again. Yeah. And see, you you know, we're talking about where you disagreed with me about how things happen for a reason. You met your wife. You really going to make me record this? Yeah. Yeah. Hell yeah. Very very good point. (laughs) Very good point. I could make that point for hours and hours of this podcast. Um, Oh, boy, you don't have your spectacles on, huh? How about your buddies? Which ones? Here, take that. I don't know what. Them's is the last two. Yeah, we'll get that. Okay. okay. Yeah, definitely. Did you guys go to medic school together too? We did. Really, man, uh, you guys spent a lot of time together. Wait, <laughs> no. uh, we did. We met in EMT school, um, and then uh, we worked her uh, just under a year. She was at Advanced Ambulance. I was at Berwyn, and she actually got sponsored through Advance, and I got sponsored through Lincolnwood. But we were already dating at the time to uh, St. Francis. Uh, it just worked out. Yeah. And, and then uh, you guys put your name on the city list together. Yeah, yeah. she was like number sixty-eight or something like that, and I was number one hundred on the list. Who was a better student? Is that a serious question? <laughs> I <think laughs> Clearly, I was better. <laughs> <laughs> is it is it random for you guys when you yeah. put your name? Okay, yeah, got it. She may have helped me through medical school. <laughs> uh, um, but yeah, it's honestly the whole entire thing is pure coincidence, and it's crazy. 
Who's a better medic? Hmm? Who's a better medic? Oh, her. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. It's mostly because I can try it. Ask me who's a better fireman. <laughs> <laughs> so it's funny. When we were going through the academy, anytime she did something better, they'd give me a hard time. Uh, you know, but if I did something better, I'd raise my hand like, wait, 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 wait a minute. What's, what's going on here? Who am I? Yeah. What the fuck? No, she's, she's legit. She, she's really good at it. Yeah. We kind of got ahead of ourselves. Before you went to the city, uh, you were at Lincolnwood? Yeah. So I did a, literally one day less than is, a year. I, I, we on I a con- is that a contract? It is a contract. Yeah, okay. Yeah. I mean, Paramedic Services of Illinois. Right. right. It's, uh, so, it so, is again. Yeah, but. Still? Yeah. Kind of backing up, like any any anything significant through EMT, anything significant through paramedic, anything so prior much. to that. Honestly, that was just me, my relationship with my wife growing. Sure. Honestly, that's really all that was going on. Okay. Um, when I got to Lincolnwood, uh, I was there for a while, uh, so about seven years, I think it was. Um, that's a stretch. My yeah. My biggest thing with Lincolnwood is. I, I really struggled with the fact that it was a private company. I, I and I I still I still do. It, it's it's crazy to think. I'm a believer in missions. I come from the Marine Corps. If there's a mission, you accomplish it. But what's the mission of a fire department? You know, fire protection, fire prevention, EMS, right? Whatever the hell you want to come up with some catchy phrase or whatever, that's fine. But when you're a private company, what's your goal? You Profit. You have to make a profit or you have to provide a service. And I, I understand you absolutely can provide both. But when you're not giving 100% to one. Are you take away from the other? Right. It, it's a conflict of interest. I'm not saying PSI's goal isn't to help the residents link. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that they can't give 100%. This is just my opinion. And I struggled with that big time. I never talked about it, but I absolutely struggled with that. How did you go from Berwyn to Lincoln? Did you put Berwyn, in for it? Berwyn or? was a PSI contract. Right. So I, uh, just through having some friends and uh, interviewing, uh, they took me and sponsored me for the fire academy at yeah. Darien. Okay. Yeah. So I went to the fire academy at Darien. And once I got the firefighter too, they just transferred then me. And you went to, to a fire contract. Yeah. Damn. Instead of just the EMS contract in Berwyn. Dan, how did you get to Lincoln? Because you got me a job at Lincolnwood. So how did you end up there? Uh, a friend of mine, Matt Bloomquist, and when they called and asked uh, if I if I had a job, you know, if I wanted a job, yeah. and I said, "I get, can I bring a plus one?" <laughs> no shit. Oh, yeah. you? No shit. Yeah, I got you're a, a fucking you. sweetheart. Yes. Right, my guy. Suck all. Yeah. yeah, that's awesome. Cool. Yeah. That's that's. And I was planning on just continuing. Um, to be like a nurse and then to go on to nurse practitioner or PA or whatever. And Dan comes to me and he's like, Hey, I got this job, fireman, this and that, you know, it pays pretty good at the time. It paid pretty good. Um, They'll send you to fire academy. And I was like, yeah, it sounds fucking great. So yeah, Dan really hooked me up and And set me on that path that I'm on right now. And I was going to say that really probably helped you out getting the job over PG, right? Oh, I sure. would not have gone to fire. I don't know how I would have gone to fire academy if it hadn't been for them. Yeah, you know, because they sponsored the two of us, and we went, and Dan got. I never heard fight that. I know and... you guys came there. The same time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. I was already there. I don't know how long, but not not too long. I don't I, remember. I actually just sent out the picture again of like, it's Steve wearing your helmet in your apartment because you had just gotten your gear at our. Whatever, like we were. We, we said were we'll soirees at my, at my con. Yeah, you know, but like it was like <laughs> steaks. Yeah, yeah. steaks it was just, and beer. Yeah, well, no yeah. steaks and gentlemen's jack. That's right. I might know how to barbecue. Yeah, <laughs> oh, he does. The gentleman does. <laughs> does. The gentleman does. And that's where you ran into these fellows, right? Yeah, yeah. Me and Dan were on the same shift, and Fredo was on third shift. You know, here we are now. I gotta kind of say things happen <laughs> or are still happening for a reason. You still, you still believe that? I'm st- I'm, I'm not gonna stop. <laughs> so how how many years were you there, Brian? I was there for seven years. Seven years. Seven years. Okay. What about Keating. Hmm. Keating. Oh, the Keating fire. So this episode of Chicago's Bravest Stories is brought to you by Rescue One CBD Oil. Uh, Rescue One was kind enough to send out some uh, CBD when they knew that uh, you guys. Uh, we're going to have a second appearance here on the show. And they um, sent out their uh, 
the regular Rescue One CBD oil that's 0.000% of THC. And you can get that uh, when you go to rescueonecbd.com. And uh, if you enter the promo code BRAVEST, you'll get 25% off all the products. So I know, Dan, that you're a big proponent of CBD oil. Like, what's your take on CBD? I I love it. Uh, it's worked wonders for me. I have a lot of aches and pains and, and uh, little bumps and bruises from over the years. I do. I use it like a pre-workout for muscles. I, I go on a run with it and, it, and and then I do at night, I do the droplets, and it helps me sleep. I have great dreams. Uh, I'm a big proponent of the CBD. Yeah, and I've been using it uh, ever since uh, Rescue One sent us out some, and we were talking off the air before we got on the microphone that we've actually, with this podcast, we've, so many people have come out, they've been looking for a product like this, but with the detectable amounts of THC that they were afraid to actually reach out and get the benefits of CBD oil. So when you have a CBD oil like Rescue One, which has 0.00% THC, now people can actually get the benefits of CBD. And for me, the sleep benefits has really been a game changer for me. The waking up in the middle of the night, uh, you know, if I turn in the middle of the night, I'm up and that's just terrible. And like we were saying before the break, if I didn't believe in this product and it didn't work for me, you know, talking about it right now, because if somebody wanted us to promote a cheap ass Halligan bar or something like that, and they couldn't get into a door, you know, who are they going to talk to? They're going to get a hold of me and they're going to tell me, Hey, why are you telling me to buy this shit ass product? But this product is actually really good. I stand behind it. And, you know, they were kind enough to send some out for all the guests here today. And, uh, again, rescue1cbd.com. Uh, it's the number one and enter bravest for 25% off. Oh, getting fire. So, hang on. Let's take a step back. Cause I, I'd like to think that we were there in somewhat of a golden age of that organization. When I, when, when I first came there, I, I thought it was great guys, and I, I had a blast. Yeah. And regardless of what it was, and you're 100% right with the, the organization and the structure and, and some of the leadership or whatever, but the, the guys that were Goals there, and, yeah. the guys were great. Yes, that was so, never the problem. Yeah. yeah. We, we went, uh, before we even started Fire Academy, to pick up SCBAs. Oh, and they had their, their, their big fire. Uh, is that, was that the same day? Or are you talking about when Zalki... And yeah, yeah. So we went like on a Saturday or something, or it might have even been a Sunday when know. everybody's just you know chilling. Probably like any department, Sundays you just relax. We came to pick up our SCBAs, and Chris comes out and puts us through some SCBA Ours. drills that are going to help us for like two and two a half, hours, three yes, hours. hours. You know what I mean? When he could have just kind of sh- yeah, he sat in the chair oh, relaxing, like surprise he totally. Me at all. Yeah. No, yeah. I mean, and then Chris was my officer forever, and dude's awesome. You know. So, yeah, I agree with you. At the time, like, they were just great dudes, and every day was just, like, Ooh. really good. Really so, good. in Linkwood, are there full-time guys and contract guys? Or is Every, there... Everybody was, quote-unquote, full-time, so we worked 24-48s, but um, it was all contract. You were contract uh, employees. Yeah. Yeah. The, whole, the whole department was contract. Except for right. Chief Down, too? Chief Down, yeah. Okay. Chief oh, was, yeah, that's true. Wow. Yeah. Chief was a uh, vice president of PSI. Yeah. 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 And uh, Larry... Larry yeah, I, I'm not gonna say his name, but he was my BC, which was wise officer, uh, chief, right? Chief. And, That's how I got to River Pro. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. And he was awesome too. Yeah. You know, no, I, honestly, it was it was a really good thing. It's just what what really I I struggled with was the mission. Like, what what was our yeah. overall goal? And we we talked about this. One of the one of the things that that we did being on shift with you and and Timmy, especially, is evenings yeah and i don't know how many evenings we did this over how many like years a span of years we would sit on the apron or inside the the bay and we smoke a cigar and we would talk about everything from the the war girls bad calls to everything and we and it that's that really helped me put a lot of stuff into perspective i had a, i had a rough my first couple of years at lincolnwood were rough I had some family issues and I had uh, some stuff going on with me and I really struggled my first couple of years. And that that's what got me through. But you, that, that apron therapy really helped you out. Yeah. Yeah. That's oh, a good, for that's sure. For yeah. sure. 
It's not nothing. It's I not was always out there. very excited to work on their shift. Yeah. yeah. You know, on a swap or a trade or whatever, because I had Lou and I had Cam who were awesome. And, oh, yeah. and Chris was yeah. awesome, obviously. But I can't share the same stories with them like I can with you guys. Yeah. You know what I mean? So right. it was always great to come to your I was so spoiled to have what yes. we're doing right now. Yes. Me and Dan did that every third day. Right, yeah. right. Yeah. And the best part is you could just do it over and over because I'd forget every time. <laughs> <laughs> and, e- and even better Remember than that. Remember that time I forgot that stuff? Yeah. <laughs> and even better than that, can we just take a special moment to thank Chris so much oh, Jesus. for everything that he's done to get, a, get us all together. On the air. On yeah, the air. get well, us all together. Really make this happen behind oh, the scenes. Oh. So it, there's a <laughs> running inside joke about me going over or around Corey here to to get this uh, to, to get, get these three together. The when I went when I, when I stepped uh, outside the chain of command here. <laughs> things things got wild. I took a beating. So, so I'm still taking a beating <laughs> to this minute. Thank you again, Chris. Uh, so <laughs> was Keating. So hold on. Back to Keating. But right before Keating. All right. If, I struggled with like the mission of our fire department. Yeah. And I'm not talking about some cheesy line on a piece no, no, of paper. No. I'm talking about the overall mission. And it, I, I came to kind of come up with it, like this thing. Where it, it, your mission is to provide whatever you want, fire prevention, uh, EMS to your, your people. Come up with a plan to, to do that. Plans change. Missions don't. All right? I, I didn't make this up myself. This is That's stuff, I, this is stuff I've no. learned. Yeah. Yeah. Complete the mission, not accomplish the plan. There's too many people focus on your plan, and it, the mission is already – you're not even relating to the original mission at this point. So I've always, I've always stuck with that, and it's really – and, again, this is nothing I've made up. This is stuff I've learned. Accomplish your mission. Don't complete the plan. Plans change. Um, that was one of my biggest struggles with Lincoln. When we did a lot of training, and I feel like the training was a lot of checking the box. Sure. It was you're looking to complete training, not conduct training. And I'm very passionate about this, and this goes all the way back to before Nazaria, yeah. Yeah. with Ten Sealy doing the doing the patrols in Kuwait. And you, I mean, you can stop it here and press record because. The funny thing about training is it'll save your life and you won't even know it. Because something Fredo did saved my life. Something I did saved your life. You won't even know it is when it's done right. So it's kind of that no news is good news thing. People don't realize that. So I really struggled with the training of Lincoln one. We used to go out and on warm summer days water the lo- water the yard. Yeah. <laughs> and I remember yeah. you you talking about okay guys come and i was on. i was aggressive at this i mean right. i had a heart I, I didn't accept this i had a really hard time they said come out in helmets and gloves that's all you got to do and and wise came out he goes really you're gonna do that typical what are you gonna do yeah well that's because i'm an asshole <laughs> and then he goes are you gonna go into a fire like that well, i don't know well why don't you get your shit on like we're really gonna do this why don't you why don't you why don't you train like you you do it okay so I went out and we got our stuff on and then everybody else, we shamed everybody else and, and everybody else. And we had good training and we used to do that. We used to train like we'd fight, we'd prepare like we fight. Cause everybody, I, believe me, I'd love to go out and do it in, yeah, right. in helmet and gloves. That's fine. Right. Cause now you're just spraying. Woo-hoo. I can make a hydrant. That's easy, but do it like train, like you fight. And you, you're the one that brought that up when I, when I was walking out and he goes, really, you're going to do that. Yeah. You're right. Yeah. So I'm, I'm very passionate about, and it, it's not something I just stumbled upon. It's what was taught to me. About, like, like I said, I was lucky to have that leadership. I'm, we, I, uh, to this day, I honestly think we were alive in Nazaria because of my platoon's training and because of Lieutenant Seeley. And I know for a fact I'm alive with 4th Platoon, 2nd Force Recon because of our training and the lack of the enemy's training. Yeah, one thing that uh, has always frustrated me with all of the departments that I've been on, 3-4, was when we would go out to do training and uh, the lieutenant or captain, whoever it was, would be like, all right, we're going to make Waz, who was just a regular firefighter, 
the lieutenant on this call. You're absolutely you right. You go exactly ahead you're going and take this. these two guys into the building. Yep. And I would be like, I'm not going to be in the building with Waz. I'm going to be in the building with you. So why the f- yep. hell are you, are you not putting your gear on and going into the building yep. with me? So I know what you're doing and you know what I'm doing. You know I what I mean? I have a white shirt on. Yeah. <laughs> right. So... I mean, not to toot my own horn, but no, I put my gear on I completely, all I know exactly the damn saying. time and go in on, you know. Well, I think that goes back to what you guys were talking earlier is that you learned more from bad, bad leadership, leadership yeah. than you did from great Like I'm great not going to sit here and, and I, I, don't, I don't want that to come over that way. I'm not sitting here and bashing Lincoln with it at all because I think overall they, they sent out a, good, a very good product to the citizens of Lincolnwood. Um, we had good leaders and we had bad leaders, just like every organization. I'm not going to sit here and bash it. Um, but I, I, me personally, I struggle with some certain aspects of it. That's all. I don't, yeah, I'm and, not going to sit here and honestly, bash it. probably, I don't know, pro- probably the name isn't even going to make it in. But, but like you said, the mission, like what's, what are you trying to accomplish here? You know, like that's, that's always been kind of my pet peeve too, is like what, what are we trying to accomplish here? And like a place like there is different because of you, Bri, because like when there's a a place like that, when there's a lack of leadership, the only place or, or the only people that excel in a place where there's a lack of leadership are guys who are self-motivating. You know, the, that's the only people. Those are the only people like the guys who are like, uh, we'll see where today goes. Like they show up to that, that town, they're going to lay on the couch all day long. They're not going to do anything. The, the self-motivating guys, the guys who wake up at five in the morning and run 15 miles, the guys who, you know, who, who sleep three hours a night cause they got, you know, whatever, cause they got demons going on. Like these are the people that are going to end up like they wake up in the morning. They're like, I'm getting shit done today. You know, they're the ones who are going to excel. But, like, if there's no leadership, you're not getting any leadership from guys except it's from you, Bri, or except, you know, from you, Danny, or, or, or you, Al. Like, I mean, these are places where, like, yeah, it, it sucks to not have, like, a mission, but, like, that's where guys like you stand out, you know? Like, that's that's where, you know, you guys tear yourself apart and, and like – your guys are your guys aren't working because oh I'm gonna get fucking get in trouble tomorrow. Like your guys are working because fucking Dan's a great guy, and like if if I do a good job, then he does a good job, and I'm working to, to make sure that Dan does it. You know, and like I mean, I get it. Like it, I'm sure it was a fucking nightmare because I worked for the same companies, but like it, I get what you're saying too. That like there's there's some fucking studs there too, oh, absolutely. you know, yeah, they, absolutely. that you were yeah. with. Yeah. I mean, I'm looking. The and, guys were never the, the guys right. were never the problem. Right. Well, yeah. and it was just the overall mission. That's all, that's what right. I struggled with. And, ju- and just so everyone knows here too, like these, that's where three, these three guys come together. Like that's yeah. where these yeah. three guys, right. you know, know each other is, is from this town. So, I mean, speaking of that, like now take us to this Keating. So, cause this is, this in, is a, in town. Keating is the first time this happened to me. It's been about, I think maybe five, four or five times now where training, quality training has paid off the immediate or next shift after doing it. It's, it's happened to me numerous times. Um, made a fire on Keating, I don't know, 6,800 block oh, yeah. probably, right off of Pratt. Yeah. In um, town. In town, in Lincolnwood. This is your fire. Uh, it was our fire. We were first engine, first truck. Um, and uh, as we get toned out, it was middle of the night. Uh, we had a report of people trapped. We pull up. The funny thing, not the funny thing, the are, significant thing. Are you an thing, officer at this point? I am not. Okay. I was driving the ambulance, so that means I jumped to the truck. So okay. I just ditched the ambulance on somebody's front lawn, um, which I got in trouble for. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, so the significant part about this is earlier, let's back up to in the morning, we had, uh, division drills at Nipsta, which I, I've been fairly vocal about being less than stellar drills at Nipsta at the time. They've, this it is got a lot better. 
Yes. Got yeah, absolutely. Years. This is a long time ago. Um, we did uh, the morning, I don't know, engine and truck. They flip-flopped, uh, went to Nipsta, and they did, like, uh, search drills and tick camera drills. And when the truck was gone, the engine did... Uh, we have a new hose load where it's like a circle thing, stupid thing mm. that we supposed yeah, to have for high rise, but we just load, decided right? to put it on everything but for the high rise pack. Um, we had a new uh, pre connect hose load on the engine. So we're, uh, whoever was home drilled on the pre connect, whoever went to Nipsta drilled on the tick camera and searches. And then in the afternoon they switched. So let's fast forward to whatever time in the middle of the night, we get a report of uh, fire with people trapped. That uh, night, huh? At night. No shit. Uh, probably midnight, 1 o'clock in the morning, maybe. Um, and all three of you were working at this time? Me and no, Dan were afraid I wasn't. I'm on the next shift. Yeah. I was on the tr- I was in the truck. You were hydrant? I was engine. A pipe or hydrant? I was a backstep, so I was engine. Okay. Um, we were familiar with the house a little bit. We had, had EMS. No, 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 no. You were driving the engine or the ambulance? Yeah. I oh, we were writing. both on the ambulance. Yeah, I was writing. Yeah, 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 yeah I was you, writing. Okay, sorry. Bear so I jumped to the end. I jumped to you the end. You jumped, jumped the engine, I jumped to the Did Dan just remember something that <laughs> you didn't remember? How does that explain my <laughs> my mental capacity? Dan just out-remembered you. Ten, <laughs> ten second time is what we were talking about yeah, earlier. That's what I said. Yeah. Uh, when? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we ended up doing a Fenner and a search on a First floor window, which is like elevated, so it was like uh, you needed a boost up. Sure, like a not like just a, like an um, entrance, yeah. like a raised range kind of, but sideways, wider than it is. Longer, okay, yeah. In the rear on the seaside, and uh, we found the victim. Like a tri level type deal. Nah, no, just a raised range. No, no, no tri level. Just okay. honestly, I don't. There wasn't a first. I don't even know if there was a basement to be honest with you. Um, and you found somebody on the first floor. We did in the bedroom that we went. To, this was the victim's bedroom. We knew that the whole, the husband was out in front. What were the us. conditions like when you went in? Fire blowing out of the A side, uh, A B corner, uh, A D corner, A D corner. Um, we entered the the B the B D corner, and uh, we found the victim like half under the bed, like right when I grabbed her foot. Uh, Lieutenant Pierce had her with a tick camera, so we found her with a tick camera. And uh, I was, I mean, I mean, I don't even know how much time I had on it at this point. Maybe two years. I, I remember I was moving a little too fast. I grabbed her shirt, ripped it right off. <laughs> okay, grabbed her arm. I felt like I almost ripped her arm out. Off it was her. you, Pearson Salata. And right? Kenny, Kenny Salata. I Kenny. believe he's oh, yeah, in yep. Gurney he's now. I think he's a Gurney. I thought he was now. south. He did. I think, I think he went up to okay. Gurney. Okay. Good dude. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Awesome. Yeah, Pierce, awesome. Yeah. Um, so Pierce found him with a tick, right when we found him, and uh, we ended up getting her out, passing her off to the battalion chief, Ray, that was at the window, passing her out the window, and then we exited. Oh, it's always killed me. It's always killed me because we never closed the door to the bedroom. <laughs> it's all, I mean, everything worked out great, but it's just that stupid, that, not stupid, it's that significant little yeah, it thing we're supposed to do because... By the time we were getting out, fire was starting to come into the room. Sucked it all right in. And then I believe I think it was Cicero, Timmy Cicero, that was on the pipe. Timmy, Timmy held the pipe, and he put it, got the fire in check. I mean, honestly, we okay. So we got her in the backyard, um, opened up her way, gave her a few breaths and everything. I believe we brought her to a Skokie, a Skokie ambulance, and, uh, and and as far as I know, she she lived. I mean, I was no deficits and everything. But the significance of this was literally. The pre-connect was pulled that we trained on that morning, and the tick was used and proper search techniques were used. I mean, it, literally, we trained on that this morning. Right. And that's happened that to me four, four that other day. times. That's happened to me in my fire service career. Really? Once, my first fire in at 117, the, the shift before my captain was telling me about... <laughs> my, that's her? Is it really? I'm Facebook friends with her. Are you serious? She is 100%... Yeah. Oh, and that's very, fantastic. And, and I never, gone, she has gone out of her way on numerous occasions to show her appreciation to the department. Oh, good. Yeah. That's she's awesome. she's a great, really, really great lady. I'm not gonna say any names, but no, but, that's yeah, great. Really, really class. And it's if you look on here. How many years ago was this? Uh 12? all of ten. Oh yeah. fifteen years ago, crazy. So she was she was a young girl at the time, huh? Mm. No, I'm middle aged, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. 
Um, my first fire at 117, the ship before my captain was talking about if we get like a garage or back porches or something like that, he wants us to take the tray, inch and three quarter with the two and a half, not just take the exposure line. Like some companies do. There's no wrong tactic. It's just what people do and what others. Some people take the the officer side and then bring the the, uh, the rubbish line and attach. My captain wants us to bring the tray with us, so it's already there. And so my first fire is exactly what we did. It was basement, full basement going back porches and second floor. We broke it. We broke off the tray, broke off the inch three quarter. We knocked it down with a two and a half, reattached, and went down to the basement. It's literally exactly what we drilled on the day before. Drilling saves lives. I can't. I can't uh, uh, hit this enough. You know. I mean, I'd rather not drill than do bad training. You know, bad tra- bad training was worse than no training. It's it's that significant. I got just a quick story. Yeah. We were, um, you know, I had just gotten promoted to sergeant. I got promoted to sergeant when I was in Iraq, so I had like four or five guys under me. And we were doing foot patrol in some neighborhood. I don't remember which one. And uh, it was two columns, one on one side of the, uh, like on the sidewalk on one side of the road and another column on the other side of the, on the sidewalk on the other side of the road, staggered. And rounds came in. I'm not even sure from where. Everybody hit the dirt and rolled to the outside exactly like how you're supposed to. And I did the same. I hit the dirt and I rolled to the outside and I look up and everybody had done the same thing. And it was like one of the proudest moments. You know what I'm saying? Like it was nothing, but like everybody did exactly what they everything, were supposed to yeah, do. Yeah, everything worked the yeah. way it was planned. Right. Everything, yeah. yeah. And it, I mean, at the time we hadn't had too much contact. So for that to happen and for everyone to just do exactly what they're training, training to do was like one of the proudest moments. You know, it's, 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 yeah, it's incredible. It like, is. It, when, when all your hard work pays off. Yeah. I mean, it really fucking makes you feel good. Right. You know? I think that that's really where, um, you know, city, suburban, uh, wherever fire departments you are. Like, I think that that's really where boots hit the ground and, um, you know, departments I think are, are kind of stand aside from each other is like, how much they're training and how much like 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 you guys said like you don't i mean it's fucking sunday you know you you might smell like a fucking bourbon barrel you know you <laughs> might you might have been up till a couple hours before shift but like the the idea of like well fucking got to get this done like this is what we do and and knowing that that muscle memory is there that you know even if i'm a fucking idiot today like my body says to do this despite what i'm thinking like that's that's where i've never looked at training as a hassle i've looked at bullshit training as a hassle but show me a good fireman that does quality training and and comes back and says that was bullshit they're gonna sit there and be like no that was that was good i'm glad we did that yeah i didn't really feel like it but quality training is 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 key it has to be realistic quality training, otherwise it's fucking garbage. We uh, and that's what well. we don't we don't get too many fires out at BG. Most most people don't. Yeah, yeah I mean, but um, because you you don't know what you're gonna do when you're in, you don't know what you can do until you're actually in that situation. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like we all think that you can go into a hot house and put the fire out and save the person, or whatever. But until you actually do it, you have no fucking idea. But because we've trained, guys just fucking do it. You know what I mean? It's it's that muscle memory. It's that you've trained and, and you rely on your training and it just becomes automatic. And that it is has worth, exactly why you train. Yeah, exactly. And in Iraq and in, in the fire service, it, it's invaluable. So, Brad, going through paramedic school, you're, you were fully intended on getting a job with Chicago on yeah. the fire side. I, uh, I had take some suburban tests. I took <laughs> the first te- test I took was Huntley's, which I have family out in like Woodstock area. I'm like, okay, I could do this. Absolutely. I remember I went with Lou and, uh, yeah, they, uh, <laughs> said they're higher. There was 60 people for the test and they're hiring nine. Well, like, that's pretty good odds. Like yeah. for a suburban test and, uh, test comes out and I finished fourth. Like, oh my God. Like first try. Are you kidding me? 
I hired three and threw out the list. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I, I had all my eggs in the city basket. I grew up a city guy. Both my parents are cops. I wanted to be a Chicago fireman, you know. And when, where, what were you doing when you got called for the city on the medic side? Uh, I was working in Lincolnwood, uh, full time, River Grove, part time, and I was teaching for IFSI. Okay. When so you took your passion for training, you went to um, IFSI and you started teaching down there, and you took so, that that same ethic with you. Yeah, I I took as I took as many classes as I could when I was at Lincolnwood, especially the ones that were grant funded that were free because most of the only ones they would send us to. Um, when I went through collapse, uh, I felt. Uh, I feel like I've used the word significant way too many times throughout the last, <laughs> last year. After hearing it, I'm like, uh, I thought it was pretty significant on the uh, the w- the approach, the way they handle things. Like everything, I mean, they, they do colors in the morning, raise the flag. Um, the training is quality, as realistic as you can be training. Um, and I'm I'm a when, not if guy kind of for the Chicagoland area. So I, re- I really bought into the training. I believed in it. So at the time, you had to, uh, there was no state fire marshal portal website kind of thing. You had to take the class, go back to your fire department, fill out a form, send it to IFSI. IFSI would sign it, send it to state fire marshal. State fire marshal sent it back to you to sign up for the state test. It was ridiculous. So in doing that, I wrote a letter basically saying how I believe in the program, I believe in what you're doing. Uh, kind of volunteering, like I'd like to like to get my foot in the door. If you need help painting props, whatever you need, I like. To, I just want to be involved in something I believe in. I sent them a, like a real nice letter, spelled it out a little nicer, and uh, nothing. I got my notification to, for exam. <laughs> you know, four years later, I got a text from a friend like, "Do you still want to be a collapse instructor?" I was like, "What the fuck? <laughs> is, this, is this a thing? Like, I, how, is that that actually worked?" I'm like, absolutely. I talked to my wife. We had young. We just had him, my daughter at the time. I'm like, oh, this is horrible timing. <laughs> hmm. um, so, yeah, I got involved in the collapse program, uh, structure collapse ops and tech. And then from there, uh, I started teaching the uh, the RID under fire, the rapid intervention technician class. So those are the two programs that I teach or I help teach. Okay. And you get called for the city. Um, and what year was that? I mean, I know, but. 14. For- <laughs> right. 2014? I don't think it was 14. August 2014. Yeah. Yeah. I think so. No, 14. 14? Yeah. Okay. All right. You, but you don't go alone. You go with April. Right. We, that's what we actually yeah. ended. Yeah, we yeah, ended the last one. Month. You, uh, you make it to the um, Chicago, Chicago Fire Department uh, EMS Academy, and you were the first class of what – would be known off that list, the yeah. alphabet class yeah. out of <laughs> all of those groups you wind up uh in the alpha class fitting fitting <laughs> <laughs> but that's actually pretty significant um because i ended up being in the front of seniority in the first class off that list so that's significant for crossing over well, five years later four years later yeah. three six weeks later there's 150 people right well in, in a short amount of time, you're even before you're off your candidacy, you have almost 100 people behind you right. before right. you're done with your candidacy. Hiring, hiring, hiring so many people, yeah. Because there was a, a, a time when we were down there that there was three classes going on at the same time, which they were really trying to get medics in and out. And how many weeks did your class wind up being? Six. Which is abbreviated, yeah. to say the least. Yeah. Was it like, like militant? Or was it more relaxed? Well, uh, yes. In the beginning, you guys had Johnny Cole, yeah, and he was very he's Cole, scary. Cole and Banshra did very well. Yeah, yeah, and they played the part it very was, well. They were very militant in that drill instructor role, but and did a good job with it. Like they, yeah. I, they did, they yeah. did, yeah. And you know, there that was their role, and. They didn't get involved in the education or nor the, should they. You know. That's not their role. Yeah. And so then there were the the other instructors like myself and some of the other medics that took on a different role in that academy as far as um, 
the hard part for me with these guys was to kind of play that militant role because I wanted the rush to the point where I wanted to get them to that point where they trusted me and they wanted to learn the stuff that I wanted to teach them. And, you know, I wanted to get past all this nonsense stuff that you got to go through and, you know, play the game. And now let's get to the teaching part. I was still learning how to be an instructor when these guys came in, but I had an idea of what I wanted to teach these guys, especially when Brian was talking about, you know, having your mission. Sometimes, and this is way above my pay grade, but... The mission was to get as many medics out on the street as we could during that time. And I had to kind of play within that confine. So yeah. that's, um, a hor- that's a horseshit mission. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, yeah. you no, know, I, I get the position the department was in, but that, that's absolutely horseshit. Yeah, and, and you know what? Yeah. Um, uh, I mean, you work with what you got to deal with. Yeah, then. and so I just wanted to impart my two cents and move on to the next class because there was what we go to uh, i stayed down there for till foxtrot did you really yeah or uh, delta delta and then um they had still right on the heels three more classes after that so they were they were jamming out medics brian finishes up there you go to the south side it did yeah i got assigned uh ambulance uh 58 you wound up having a good partner. Oh, I been, right. like, again, <laughs> spoiled, just like yeah. every, everywhere else. Uh, my first, first I went out to Ambulance 55 at, uh, with Frank Jackson just for a month before our assignments. Awesome. Yeah. Absolutely awesome. Uh, uh, Ambulance 55 was the assignment of another podcast alumni, Jeff Rich, yeah. who was here on our very first podcast. I, uh, I actually talked to Jeff. Before I ever decided to do that, I, I reached out to a few people before yeah, I ever reached out to that experience. Do this. You son did of you a Zelky bitch. Rich? Is that what you did? <laughs> no, he Zelkied me. He's a, oh, that's he's a, I'm the Corey that's Lieber that's of oh, this. He Zelkied me. He's a Truck 29 guy. <laughs> so, uh, so I was there for a month and then I got assigned to 58 and I couldn't believe it. That was, uh, it's what I, I wanted Inglewood. Yeah. I, I'm a North Sider, but I, no rhyme or reason. I just wanted Inglewood. I, I got it. I couldn't believe it. I, I, like I won the lottery. And a lot of work to be done. Yeah, I was Over with uh, Cedric Jordan. Gentleman, oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> Nicest guys in this fire department. Loved yeah. It. Absolutely loved it. And how long were you a single role medic before you had the opportunity to cross? Uh, four and a half, five years. Yeah, five years probably. Yeah. Somewhere in between there. Yeah. For people who don't understand how the Chicago Fire Department works, as long as you take the entrance exam f- – to be a firefighter, if you come on as a single role paramedic, the city will give you the opportunity to what we call crossing over. So Brian can go to as a single role paramedic, and now he'll cross over to the fire side as a firefighter paramedic. And you, so there's a class of firefighters who have to go to the EMS side. They do their three months down at Fire Academy South. And then when that group goes over to the Quinn and start their firefighter training, Brian goes and meets up with them, has a crossover, because he doesn't have to, he's already a paramedic, he's already working. He just catches up with the group when they get to the fire side. How was your experience there? Can I talk about something real quick yeah, before I go to that? Um, kind of skipped it over. I want to make sure we touch it because I'm going to hit on another story while in the fire academy. Um, we talked about uh, the mental health and uh, dealing with stuff a little bit. Um, and we talked about like dealing with, uh, Dave was okay because we we're in the middle of Fallujah. We didn't really have a choice. We were still fighting. Tom was a little bit harder because we went back and we're sitting in our tent and we had some downtime. What, what was tough was after I got out, guys were still in. Guys kept dying. I was like, well, wait a minute. I got out. Like, what the, what the fuck's happening right. here? I, did, I thought I didn't have to deal with yeah. this shit anymore. I, I already struggled enough. Uh, so that. I had a real, I had a much harder time dealing with it once I got out than when I was in. Because in, I was busy. I had a mindset. I was trying to do stuff. Did you, um, did you feel like you were helpless? Like not being able to help out over there when you? You know, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't use the word helpless. I, I was just angry. 
I, I, I was like, what the fuck? You know? I heard about Rob. I already talked about it earlier. Rob Gilbert was killed. Um, and it just kept happening. Guys from my grunt unit, guys from my recon unit, and then it was a couple suicides. I'm like, what the fuck is happening? And the longer I've been out, the the longer it spreads in between. But when I first got out, it was like every two months. It was brutal. Then it turned like every six months. Then it was like once a year. It just kept happening. That was harder and harder to deal with. So that's where I came up with that, uh, like the what I talked about earlier, being like significant enough just to be a part of a story, part of the history, you know. Uh, so I want to talk about, I just want to hit that before we went into the fire academy. But yeah, I uh, went to the fire academy, and uh, I, got, I was sitting there la- last night trying to figure out how I was going to word this without sounding arrogant, and I absolutely do not mean this to be arrogant. But I, I put a lot, a lot, more than ever before, stress on me for the fire academy. I felt like I had a lot of eyes on me. I had, I, I felt like, I felt like I had... A decent reputation. You know, I got the guys from my FSI. I got my military reputation. I was driving the chief at the time, so a lot of people knew who I was just for that. And I was a fireman before. I'm a fireman that teaches for FSI. I'm going through a fire academy. I feel like I, I, I should be the, the better one, you know? And, I'm, and I know we talked about it at the end of one of the other episodes where I was like, I was also trying to pull my shit where I wanted to be like Alex. And I wanted to be like... Uh, I wanted to get the award and prove something academically and stuff. Like that brought my stress level. Like, it was brutal. Like I didn't, I, I didn't expect this. I'm like, all right, go through this fucking fire academy and be done with it. I'm already a fireman. How hard can this be? Oh, I got this idea of getting this award. I'm like, God damn it! Why did I ever think about this? You know. Well, ex- explain the significance of getting an award at the academy. Like, well, you get to you get to pick your spot. They yeah. give you a list of assignments, and you get to pick your assignment, which is huge. It is it is huge. It's career-changing. Yeah. So I had to go for it. Um, that's one of the main reasons why I ended up taking the driver position for Fred, for Chief Schomer, before I crossed over. I felt like I could— uh, and It was close, right? Wasn't you and somebody else? Wasn't it close? Very, yeah. It was decided between— It was the uh, academic one? yeah. Uh, it was decided between uh, 0.08%. <laughs> and the uh, shitty part was he was about 10 times smarter than I was. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I, so you beat him out by 0.08%. I, 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 I legitimately felt so bad because I know how, I mean, I know how hard I tried. I, I literally studied for a year before I ever crossed over. I, uh, this is going to get kind of tough, but I, uh, I've never fucking <laughs> read that much before in my life. I'd probably rather stay five hundred miles at least a hundred times. Um, and uh, I just, it was a matter of like how, if I could hold him off because he kept gaining on me. This poor guy. I, I wish, I, I wish he was able to pick two. He really should have been able to do it. Uh, yeah, he had 0.08% less than me. Um, That's a question. Less than that, yeah. <laughs> that, that's it's, missing one question on that, and any of the, because it's cumulative. Yeah, it's seven, I think, total tests. Yeah, six in the final, I believe it was. But uh, you know, well, let's be honest. Who, who, who put in more time reading? Who put in more time trying? I, there's no doubt in my mind that that I, I right. put, that I, I mean, I, yeah, no. They, like absolutely. you're saying, this kid I had to. It. I, I have right. a memory problem. Right. <laughs> I have an attention problem. I had, I absolutely had to. And I, you're, you're saying this brutal. guy deserved it because he was smart. But well, like, there's I, a lot I of don't, fucking smart guys. It, it took effort to get what he did. Yeah. I, I don't doubt that for one second no. whatsoever. Okay, bless you. Um, but uh, I just, I just felt bad because I know, I know he tried. Maybe, maybe not as hard as me. Maybe as hard as me. I don't know. I can't. I can't guess. And this this guy who came in second is, is is a good guy. Yes. Yeah. So oh, if he's an asshole, I'd be like, whatever. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I, I want. Yeah. I, Fuck I, that guy. Because people are gonna listen and they're gonna know who this guy. is. He's a good guy. Mm-hmm. So it wasn't yeah, like he, you know, like I was just like, oh, I got to beat this asshole. No. Sure, was, but like yeah. I, I'm saying more as a testament to like your motivation. You know, like yeah, my motivation like was you. You were fucking busting your balls. Like, don't yeah. I, I mean? My I don't want people to think that like accomplishing you, something academically, which I've never done. Uh, I I looked up to Alex Warren Recon School. I talked about that. I, I think it was in the second show, um, where he just smoked the competition and everything. Um, my goals, my goals for the academy was I wanted to score one hundred percent. And I want I wanted to change an answer. Like I wanted to uh, uh, contest an answer. 
and I want to get the award. Those are my those are my three. I got I the award. I changed a couple answers. Wait a minute. Oh, you, nice. You had your I, I stated goal to challenge an to challenge an answer. Yeah. So not only got to be the best, you got to be a jack off doing it. Right. <laughs> Fucking nerd. <laughs> yes. Um, the, uh, That's awesome. It directly is, re- yes. It's literally directly related to Alex and Recon School. Okay. The fact that I watched him do that blew my mind. And you know what? And I'll, I'll say it because I literally, I, I read this thing so many fucking times. It was the last question, and I it might have been the one that put me over the edge. I, um, it was like something about size up, like the five factors of size up. And the answer was like building construction. But in the mod, in the state fire marshal mods, it said building condition. And I caught that. I, <laughs> so I put A, B, and C, not A, B, C, and D. And they marked it wrong. And this was the, this was, this was the final. This was the last test. And I raise my hand, I go to contestant, like, oh, Jesus Christ, this fucking guy again. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I'm that guy already. Yeah. And uh, and the guy's like, absolutely, no, no, it's obviously, but I'm like, I understand building, blah, 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 blah. I go up. I respect your answer. Right. I understand, <laughs> sir, Bob, I'm trying to be respectful. And I open up the mod, I look, and the instructor's like, holy shit. <laughs> it's just a, a typo on their part, you know? God damn. And that was, honestly, I, the only reason I said this is because it was, Kind of a cool moment for me because yeah. it was, I was yeah. literally doing it because of Alex yeah. in recon school. That's it. It wasn't just just because. Right. Otherwise, yeah, you, I would have yeah, never. You weren't the doing story. for the love of the game to be a fucking dick. Um, but but so, kind but kind of to be a dick for we, sure. Uh, well, I'm a little bit. Yeah. We uh, we took the final test. No, I'm sorry. I skipped over one of the most significant parts. Uh, the night before the final test. Uh, I was sitting there studying. So I would come home. I talked to my kids for like an hour, play play around, and everything, do dinner, and I'd be downstairs studying. My wife was an angel. Like literally, I had zero family function. Didn't go to Easter. Like I literally shut down, and I just read and read and read. It was it was brutal. Um, I'm in the basement. It's like nine nine or ten o'clock at night, studying, getting ready to go to bed for the final, the last test. Is between me and this other guy. My phone goes off, and it's a picture of Shep. The guy I was talking about yeah, numerous no times idea. before. Um, and it's him in his Army uniform. So he got out of the Marine Corps and joined the Army. Well, I think he was forced out of the Marine Corps. Uh, joined Army Special Forces. My first initial reaction was like a professional looking, you know, like my first impression, like this is fucking homo. Yeah, you know, right. like, hey, right. Chef doesn't belong in an army uniform. This look, looks retarded, you know. And I scroll, like, I did the scroll down thing, and it says, <laughs> Special Forces soldier dies in training accident. This is a is this a group a group text like with, with no, your guys? No, this is just from one guy. Okay. I was like, you gotta be kidding me. My first impression was kinda funny. I'm like, well, yeah. every time I talk to the guy, I say, like, I can't believe you're still alive. Right. <laughs> so I, I stopped. I was like, fuck. Parachute? Yeah. At Bragg or Yuma? I don't even know, to be honest with you. I think it was in North Carolina. Is that a, a common thing, Dan? Oh, yeah. 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 yeah oh, yeah. Is, is, when you hear that killed in a train, is it more than often a parachute accident? Yeah. yeah. That's, I would say that's the overwhelming the most, majority. Yeah, that's, that's the most, you have the least control, and it, it's one of, if not the most dangerous thing we do. Remember yeah. me telling you about the sniper mission I did when I was with the Grunts? With a guy who had his feet messed up. Well, that guy ended up coming to recon, and, and he was killed in training because a Humvee rolled over and crushed him. But the, I would say the overwhelming majority was, it would be air, airborne, yeah, parachute. So I saw this, and it's just fucking like a like a baseball bat to the face. Like I, I was like, I didn't know what to do. I just and this was a day the night before warrior test. Yeah. Jesus, and I, I don't. 
I, I hate telling the story this way because it turns and makes it about me, but so I stopped studying. I'm like, fuck this. You know, I did the whole group text thing. Ah. Reaching back out to your guys. Yeah. Yeah. Everyone had the same reaction. And uh, I uh, set my alarm. I, I obviously can't sit there and study. So I I, uh, I went to bed and I uh, set my alarm for about like two or three o'clock in the morning. I don't remember what. Put on a pot of coffee and started studying. Getting ready for that final. I uh, remember I wrote the form two, asking to go to the funeral, and I like loaded up, like heavy, <laughs> like there's yeah. no way they could have said no, you know. And uh, I told the instructors in the morning, took the test and everything, but it was fucking brutal, man. Uh, and then they wait, they don't, they don't tell us the results for two days. So you and end I, up going and taking the test. I did. Oh, I, I had. To. Yeah, I took the test. Head case. Um, and then. Uh, Finally, some instructors kind of took it under their reins and allowed me to go. They said, fuck it. They just go to the funeral. Yeah. yeah. So the funeral was the day after? No, a couple days after. Okay. This, um, the, uh, the class was taking the state firefighter. Uh, Which you didn't have to sit for. Basic, yeah, because I already had yeah. fire two, three, everything. Um, so timing-wise... It was okay, so I didn't have to take the test anyway. So they let me go. Uh, so it still didn't know if who won. <laughs> it was fucking brutal. It's, 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 fucking, it's just fucking agony at you. All this shit going on, and you're still Now like, I feel like a fucking, fucking asshole because really I'm, like I'm here know. for Shep, and I'm like, oh, I wonder how, who did what on the test. You know, I'm worried about myself. Um, so I'm, uh, they let me go. I think it was a friend, maybe, who knows, let's say Wednesday. I left the fire academy. I, I, I don't even know what happened. I think my wife packed my bags, bought the ticket, and I was at O'Hare in a few hours. Flew out to Virginia. And uh, I think it was North Carolina, Charlotte maybe, where I had a layover. And uh, I'm sitting there. I'll never forget this. In the terminal, I'm reading a book uh, on killing. Just a psychological effects on killing. It's a good book. Every, everyone should read it. David Grossman. Yeah. Oh. It's a yeah. Great. Book. Oh yeah. Honestly, honestly, everyone should read it. It's yeah. a great book. Uh, but I was always weird. There's a younger couple sitting across from me, and I'm like, they probably think I'm fucking some kind of weirdo reading right. this book, you know? Right. You got like your Buffalo Bill costume all of a sudden, on your. <laughs> no, fuck, wait. <laughs> all of a sudden, I look up and I see Jimmy walking. I haven't seen Jimmy, and like. Was he going to the funeral? Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah, he's on a layover just like I was. And we just, like, stopped and, like, what the fuck? What's happening here? Not a word was said if we just got up and gave each other a big hug. How was his chin? <laughs> he's okay. Yeah, okay. They, uh, I always laugh. I'm like, what is this fuck? Poor couple sitting in front of us. Like, what are these grown men doing, you know? <laughs> I just, I laugh because, like, oh, they've never been more safe than being around Jimmy, you know? <laughs> <laughs> uh I spent the rest of the trip with Jimmy. We uh, made it to uh, Virginia, went to the hotels and stuff. I met him at the bar. We had a few drinks. And then uh, we went over to Shep's funeral. We were late. <laughs> we were late. The bar took over about five minutes late, which is fine because he would have been about a half an hour late to mine. Um, we walk in, and it's packed. The Army's doing their weird little thing up in the corner. All our former recon Marines are... <laughs> are in the back and I look and <laughs> I can't even describe the feeling at this point it wasn't even about Shep fucking guys slaying the casket in front but I saw Sal Damien Jim, well, I was with Jimmy, Robert, Scott, Justin, L. Like everybody, everyone's there. I haven't seen these, any of these guys since 2005 with the occasional text message, you know. It was so surreal. 
I uh, I laugh about it now because I've I, I, I honestly it looks like I'm a kid and like the your professional NFL team walks in and you're just like holy shit that's Al holy shit that's Nate you know like all these guys like oh my god that's the, that's so and so I was like at all these guys and most of these guys are out in the civilian world now right are they still st- still in the service about half and half yeah. yeah some are involved in some way or the other some different kinds of groups um, some consulting one guy owns his own. Uh, yeah, yeah, leave it that. Some guy, they're all involved somehow. How did the how did his current teammates interact and treat you? Great, absolutely great. We did the the funeral, and then they did a party afterwards where uh, everyone got up and said a oh yeah, said yeah, a chef yeah, story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's like our like our version of a paddle party. Yep, the Marine Corps paddle yep. party, the recon paddle party. So that was kind of cool. We all did that. Uh, no, they were great. They were great. It's just kind of a surreal moment. It just sucked, you know. So while you were, when did you get the results of your test? While you were still there or wasn't it not until you came back? The first or second day back. Okay. So you had your time out there. You didn't get your head back into the, the whole academy world until you got back. And you found out that you beat somebody out by... 0.08 Point zero eight percent, yeah, which would have been good enough on any breathalyzer to, <laughs> to, to bring this back to your mom uh, breathalyzing you, uh, and you get to now you've won that award and you get to pick your choice of assignments, and you happen to pick the house of another podcast alumni from this podcast, yeah, and why did you choose to go to one seventeen? So when I, I saw it on the list, it was like fucking Christmas morning. Which is pretty amazing that that was even available to you because you can pick that spot, but it's got to be that they'll post it by, like, openings. So let me let me ask a question. Where Where is House 117? Corner of Chicago and Lamont, Chicago and Cicero. Chicago and Cicero. 4900 West Chicago. Okay, and what's... Why? Why there? Why not in a nice neighborhood, in a posh neighborhood, or next to Wrigley, or somewhere like somewhere else? Why? Why at the corner of Chicago and Le- Cicero, the Chicago and Lamont? The significant significance for me was that I visited there as a kid. Uh, it's one of the busier houses. Um, you just, the, the busier, the better experience. The more experience I'll be able to okay. get. That's the name what? of those fifteen, right? Mm-hmm. The name of those fifteen. Yeah. Yeah. The, uh, just. Being there as a kid and having the opportunity to actually work there was kind of crazy. Yeah, yeah, I like I said, it was Christmas morning when I saw that number on the list. I couldn't believe it. So you walk in. How was your first day? So I went. I was. At, I went before my first day to the introduction and everything, obviously. And uh, so, it, like, explain to people because a lot of people don't realize like you don't just show up on your your shift day as a new guy. You go there ahead of time. You introduce yourself to your officer. You introduce yourself to the guys you're going to be working with. And that's done prior to your first day yeah. showing up there. Yeah. Did you bring donuts? I did. <laughs> From where? Good ones? Uh, what's the place in Norwich? El Grady's. El Grady's. Oh, it's good. Nice. All right. Did good. you get cannolis? No. Just don't. The chocolate, chocolate donuts? Well, chocolate. I'm a oh. vegan, and I brought you guys vegan. I'm not going to be in club, so you don't have to worry about that. <laughs> Is that uh, a... You know, it's kind of funny. Before <laughs> yeah, I ever I went in, I got a text from Pat Maloney. It said, uh, "Was your grandma a school teacher, and was your dad wounded in Vietnam?" I'm with your new chief. Like, what? That's kind of weird. Whatever. I'm like, my grandma was a school teacher. My uncle was in, was wounded in Vietnam, and then it hit me. I'm like, shit. Hold on. Does he? Did he like her? <laughs> they oh, got another shit. text message like, your grandma slapped the shit out of me in sixth grade I'm like god <laughs> damn it oh man <laughs> but no it's been great I, honestly it's been great ever since the guys are phenomenal I, I've been learning a ridiculous amount I, lo- I loved being the candidate absolutely loved it because so many guys want to teach you stuff <laughs> honestly it's great I'll take it I'll take it all anybody's got anything to offer it's awesome here we are at present day you're at 117 living large Going to fires. Yeah. That's a lot to look back and people who, by the time they get through these, what's 
going to wind up being the fourth episode because <laughs> this one is definitely going to have to be another part one and two. It's a lot to take in. It's a lot to contemplate. It's, it's been a hell of a ride for you to come in, you know, from, from part one till now. And it's been, I mean, people can hear the emotion in your voice and this legitimately, and you guys, correct me if I'm wrong, but this has been an emotional roller coaster from start to finish. Oh, God. <laughs> I mean, yeah. it, it was a lot. And if, if this isn't therapeutic, I don't know what it was. Yeah. I learned a lot about you. I learned a lot about life. Three of you guys, like collectively, I'm blown away by the things that you guys have accomplished, your experiences, and I can't thank all three of you enough for, for coming in and kind of focused on Brian here, but... If you guys are down for it again, you know, we'll do a Dan Trader one and we'll do an Alfredo one. We really just scratch the surface with you two. Bri, if you want to, we'll leave you with the last word, but Alfredo, any last words? Um, I, I just was a, kind of amazed at how mine and Waz's lives were very parallel, which is, it just, how small of a fucking world, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like we were in Iraq at the same time. We were in a lot of the same places. Like, a lot of the experiences were the same. It's the same thing with Dan, you know what I mean? We've all experienced, like, the same things. We were all at the same firehouse. I was on ambulance 15 in paramedic school. You were at 117, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's just... Uh, would you... It's like things are happening for a reason? Like, like that? <laughs> I would... Yeah, sure. I would <laughs> no, say... No. I would say I'm, gonna get, I'm gonna convert you by the end of this podcast. <laughs> it, uh... I we have talked so much before, but I guess doing this for now nine hours or whatever the hell it's been, it's been uh, eye opening and how much we've all experienced uh, differently, but the same. Yeah, you know what I mean, it's uh, it's it's pretty cool. I yeah. It was it was good. It's well, like a like goddamn it. Tarantino movie. <laughs> like Waz is no. walking in the bar, yeah. Alfredo's like fucking <laughs> hitting on a chick in the corner, like fucking. Right, right. And then Tra Dan Trader comes in, fights yeah. everybody. Yeah, just, pulling the fucking yeah, China shit. Yeah. Dan, uh, your final words, and then we'll give out that Warrior's Heart number one more time. From part one to now, like, what are your thoughts and, like, you know, any final thoughts that you want to add well, to that? I want to thank you guys. And thanks, Waz, for uh, for thinking of us and for involving us. It means a lot. Yeah. It's been a I, I'm amazed at the reaction that I've gotten from the number of people that that listen, from the number of people that have said, "Hey, I you know I haven't I, people I haven't heard from or, or talked to in in uh, in years." And uh, uh, Timmy Breslin reached out and said, "Yeah, how good it was and how good it was to hear you and and and." How happy was we were doing it, and all the all the people have had such a good reaction to it. Uh, thank you for, and I know it sounds cliche, but thank you for what you've done. Thank you for the the service that you've done, that you've given, um, not just for your country, but for the for those grunts and for those other guys next to you. And I know they appreciate it. Uh, it was an honor to be here. Thank you. Thank you for being here, Dan. And we're gonna. Uh reserve the right to call you back here because we want there's a lot we want to uh, get to you with you as well before we get it's a, it's a big joke like among us fucking dicking each other off about the thank you for your service thing but like going back to the to the nonsense Tarantino thing like it's it, it's funny how the little things that you did making the pot of coffee for the guy the next day or telling the kid with the batteries you know like what are you doing dickhead like the little things that you you guys have done along the lines to to just make a big difference to the next guy and whoever else. So, I I would definitely like to extend a thank you guys for your service because while while I'm doing whatever nonsense I am post high school, you guys were out there for sure fighting the good fight. So, Bry, here it is, man. The train <laughs> is coming into the station. Uh, wrap this up for us, man. Thank you. <laughs> no, drop the mic. I, uh, that was great. Drop the mic. That was great. <laughs> he was, was not really smiling. Yeah, <laughs> I, I start with saying thanks for the opportunity. I, uh, you're providing me with a platform to provide for my kids. Uh, all the extra stuff. I'm, I'm glad people got to hear it in a way. <laughs> um, if 
people somehow find comfort in some of the stuff, great. I pre- I'm happy about that, but uh, I'm able to put down something tangible to give my kids so they're not in the same position I am not knowing about my relatives. Um, the one thing I want to throw out there, and this is dr- directly for my kids, but everyone, anybody else can listen, is uh, I talked a lot about uh, joining the Marine Corps, going to go back to Iraq, all this, all my reasons were for revenge, and I was mad and all this other bullshit. Um, after everything, uh, the one thing I can say is that there's, my my experience, in my opinion, is that there's absolutely no such thing as revenge. Uh, there's there's no way, there's nothing you could do that would bring back uh, uh, Tom Hauser or Dave Caruso or Fribley, uh, Klein, any, any of these names I can throw out there. Um, nothing you could do can bring them back. Uh, so there's no satisfaction there. So I would say focus away from the revenge and the anger and just try and move forward to uh, doing something happy because, unfortunately, those other guys that you're trying to get revenge for, they don't get that opportunity. So make it worthwhile what you have, and they don't. That's just uh, one of the things that I was able, to, I came up with that uh, helped me kind of deal with the, the nonsense. That's all I got. Okay, well, appreciate I appreciate you guys for the uh, opportunity. Well, thanks you, thank you, Brian. I can't thank you enough for being on. We'll leave it at that, man. Chicago's Bravest Stories. Thank you. We'll see you guys at the next one. Yeah, thank you, Chris Selke. <laughs> Jesus <Christ>. God <laughs> damn. The opinions and views are that of Chicago's Bravest Stories podcast and their guests. They do not necessarily reflect the views of any municipal governments fire protection districts, fire departments, EMS, or law enforcement organizations.